character. It will strengthen our faith in you. It will strengthen our passion for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Our above our Father, we are coming to know our essence. And we are, uh, in short, we are connecting with it with great uh, enthusiasm. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, thank you. We we'll say, blessed be your name. In Jesus' most powerful name, we have declared. Amen and amen, amen as we declare the program amen. open today in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Lord is good. Amen. Praise God. We are live on Facebook. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. I just want to welcome us once again. Thank you so much. All the time. Pastor Tracy, thank you. God bless you. Most of us are, are here, I believe we are here yesterday. Oh, hallelujah. Been. And we have yeah. all seeing the mighty hand of God, some of us uh, get triggered in a, in, a, in a way, you know, and um, because of the sensitivity that was shared, so we just um, want to uh, reach out to those that might be going through one uh, pain or the other, that all oh, that have felt overwhelmed, uh, about what was shared, or that have been triggered in one way or the other, that you feel like, oh my God, this relates to something that you have gone through or whatever. So we just want to put a disclaimer out there that, listen, uh, there is help for you. Okay, uh, we are going to be hearing more today. We are going to be hearing more of... Uh, uh, a lot of things, um, a lot of uh, ways to deal with those things today as well. We, uh, yesterday we have uh, a specialist, a psychologist that is with us, and probably you need a one-to-one -one attention. She will be available to reach out to you. Myself, I'm here. So as part of what I do with my work in counseling, in supporting people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we have Pastor Tracy uh, here. We have our um, uh, Professor K. Professor K. She is specialist in sexual health, so she's willing. And I believe a woman, great woman of God from the United States. She's a Christian counselor. She's dealt with a lot of trauma. She will be teaching us a lot today. So you have lots of help in the house. Hallelujah! And we are going to be sharing other. Uh, professional uh, addresses in the UK, um, maybe in Spain, um, in Nigeria, anywhere that you are, you just send us if you need extra help. But we in the house, we are here to help. We need to talk to someone one to one. So, and if you feel what is being discussed is too much for you to handle, please log out and log back in again. Don't allow yourself to get overwhelmed. Our uh, aim here is to get healed. Our aim here is to get delivered. Our aim here is to walk in freedom. So, and um, we understand that in doing all this, we need to go deep. We need to open up those things that naturally we are ashamed of. Because the enemy, he, he, he dwells in that, that thing that we want to hide away. He dwells in those situations where we, we don't want people to really know who we are or what we've been through. And until we expose those things, and whatever that has been exposed, have no power over us anymore. When he comes trying to use that against us, he knows that we are not ashamed to walk. Those scars are scars of what we have been through, and it becomes a weapon of warfare for us to destroy every wise of the enemy. Hallelujah. So please, 
don't allow, don't suffer alone. The beginning of this um, is a movement for us. We as women, we go a lot, we go through a lot and we are expected to just take it in. We are expected to just go on with it. We are expected to just, just shut it down. Some of us have been through abusive relationships some of us from childhood that we have heard yesterday, those that are meant to protect us, uh, they, they, they've done, done their work based on their own struggles as well. Here we are not trying to lay blame to anyone because there is no one in their same mind that wants to uh, take or want to destroy another, especially a minor. But the enemy, the Bible makes us to understand in John 10, 10, has come to kill, to steal and destroy. He come to steal your destiny. He come to steal the, the, the full life God has given to you. Praise the Lord. So that is why we are here to expose those lies. We are not ashamed to talk about our struggle. Most of us here, we have gone through different things. And one of the reasons I'm pioneering this, I'm, cha I'm championing this with the woman of God, is because we also, we have our own work, true life. Hello, Minister, this one. Sorry to interrupt you, ma. Don't forget I'm interpreting. Ah, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. Please, we are interpreting into Spanish, and, uh, and we are going to be taking it uh, slowly. Sorry, ma. So, uh, like I was saying, that the platform, this conference is meant for deliverance, it's meant for healing, it's meant for uh, understanding. Nobody is here to push blame. Whatever we've been through and the Lord has delivered us from is a weapon to always tell the enemy, the Lord is able to deliver. The Lord is able to save, and he is able to set us free and make us uh, an agent of freedom, an agent of uh, deliverance, an agent of transformation. Hallelujah. So I'm just encouraging every one of you. I'm going to be putting my phone number, my email. So, uh, if you are in outside the UK, my phone number is plus zero, plus four, four, seven, four, five, zero, nine, one, six, seven, one, four. And my email is A-D-E-A-D-O-M-O-R-O-T-G-I-E A-D-O-M-O-R-O-T-G-I-E at Outlook dot com so the admin will be putting it up on the chats and we'll be putting it out there on facebook same will be that of pastor tracy will be putting it out and every other professional in the house that will want to be of support to our audience that might be needing one-to-one -one. please you can just help us put out your information on the chat so that anyone that would need support after the conference will be able to connect. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome back once again, everyone. I'm so happy uh, to see us. Please let us share. Let us share. And uh, before I go on, I just want to share on Facebook, those that are with me on Facebook, Please, you can share from my you can share from my page. So I'm just gonna go out there and then uh, and share. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Yes, Lord, thank you, Lord. Amen, 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 Amen. Hallelujah. So just go, if you're my friend, 
go on my page, share if you are friends of Pastor Tracy, share, share, share. So let's people invite people to come in. Send the link out. I think somehow the 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 uh, number on the link is not working directly. So it's better you send the link to those that you feel should come in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we move on. Hallelujah. Praise Master. Praise, Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. Uh, the person that was supposed to minister with us is not around. So, but we're going to make do with who we are. We have here the Lord is mighty. The Lord is mighty. Praise the Lord. I also just want to thank you everyone for sharing your information. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. I was expecting the person that we asked for. All right. Let's move on. And then. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So yesterday, we had a very wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. So we had this powerful testimony from our bishop that at a very young age, the enemy have seen the greatness of God in her life, and the enemy was ready to destroy her at infancy. And because the Lord was with her, so the Lord was with her. And some of us, you know, why I was thinking of it, some of us will now think, why would the Lord permit such a thing? Why would the Lord allow her to go through that situation? Why didn't the Lord intervene on time? A lot of us will have those questions and valid questions. Hallelujah. It is valid. But one thing that I want to assure you, the Bible makes us to understand that when we go through deep waters, the Lord is there with us. And when we go, through, we walk through fire, he will never leave us nor forsake us. So even if you go through that challenges, or you have walked through that challenges, you have resentment towards the Lord. You have resentment towards anyone that's, ah, why did God, why will God allow me? I just want you before we start, lay it down. Lay it down. The fact that you have fight me. The Lord wants to use your situation to change a lot of things. Hallelujah. It is easy to start blaming. But let me tell you, you are more than conqueror. The Lord saved you through that situation for his own glory. The Bible makes us to understand what the enemy meant for evil. The Lord himself will turn it around for our good and to the glory of his name. So your life is made to glorify him. Your testimony is made to glorify him. Your, 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 all you have been through and that he has brought you out of darkness to so his marvelous light is made for his glory. Begin now before we Mr. Joy Ebele, please mute your mic. Sister Joy Ebele. Um, just give me a minute. I will put more people to be, uh, because I'm going to be, uh, to be co-host so that other people can handle uh, the admin thing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Please bear with me one minute. So that's... Hallelujah. 
it's good. Yes. So, first of GC. Okay. Um, that's the Tracy, I'm not seeing you. <laughs> I'm right here, Mom. Yeah, so I want to make you feel Praise God, yeah. All right. So, please, we just uh, handle the admissions and the one moderating today. Praise God, hallelujah. I, I just want us, uh, as I was saying, to come with everything and lay it down and don't be afraid. You're going, and I remind us again, disclaimer, whatever sensitive thing, when you feel it's too much, please kindly log out and log in again. And if you have been triggered by any in any by any means, if maybe you feel felt overwhelmed yesterday based on what have been shared, please reach out. Our uh, contacts are there. Our email are there. Our numbers will be uh, are there on the chat reach out one on one there are a lot of professionals and you can reach out to me directly as well we will always have one on one with you and we walk through this together and the lord is mighty to save he's mighty to deliver he's mighty to heal hallelujah praise the lord amen thank you uh, minister esther i was looking at for you <laughs> praise the lord so like we have all uh, come, uh, come to know this program issue in the tissue this conference is meant for you to take charge of your life. Yesterday, we've heard a lot from our psychologists. The more you worry, the more there's increase of cortisol in your body. Our body starts secreting that a uh, hormone called cortisol. In its proper portion, it is okay because it helps you to run away from danger. But when your lifestyle is that of worrying, when you are always scared, when you have gone through things that you have not healed from, your body continually builds a large amount of cortisol and that will now block you out that manifests as we heard yesterday in a lot of physical problem hallelujah it manifests into uh, some kind of sicknesses that will now disrupt our work with god as long as we are in this body and we are not fully present our body is not answering to us. Little or nothing we can do. Hallelujah. And then we have been taught yesterday about the psychological effect. My goodness. The fact that it can easily just block you out, freeze you, and make you to not function at all. How can you function when you have so much? So that is work, uh, breaking you down. Hallelujah. So I believe we have our pen and paper today. And what we have learned yesterday, we are keeping it as gold because those are golden nuggets that we can always revisit. Hallelujah. So we are going to move on now to the next phase of this conference. We are going to be talking a lot about how we can be able, yesterday the psychologists have explained a lot to us after that powerful testimony. And today 
we are going to be listening to another professional and then we are going to be listening to women of God and we are going to be receiving healing. So my, uh, what I'm just imploring us for, some of us, we are in a place we think we have arrived. We have, we have been healed, we have gone through. There is so much to learn if we are open to knowledge. Knowledge does liberate. The Bible says that the truth you know is what will set you free. So sometimes it is not just uh, pray, pray. Sometimes that even break us, uh, block us out. But when we know what we are praying about, one thing, I, one Bible verse that I take seriously is the one that says that before you go into the house of a strong man, you have to be able to tie him down. If you don't know what you're dealing with, little or nothing you can do about it. Because when you go with the Lord and specify your needs, he is able to meet you at the point of your needs. So please take your pen and paper. As we are going to be going into it, we will deal with it, the situation. Remember any kind of trigger, there is help in the house. And if you know you are overwhelmed, please log out and come, in, come back in. Praise the Lord. Minister Esther, you stay with us. Please just quickly give us uh, five minutes of worship as I will be calling after that Prophet, uh, Professor K to take us through uh, the steps the Lord has released to her to teach us today. God bless you, one of God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. We give glory to the most high. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is none holy as our God. There is none beside thee. I that is there anyone like a God? There is now only a God. There is now only us a God, yes, Lord. There is none beside thee, neither is there anyone I can go. There is none only. So you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You hold signs and seasons in your hands. Yes, Lord. You caught for light out of darkness. And you don't need no man to be the God you are. And you have chosen to call us your own. You hold signs and seasons in your hands. Yes, Lord, you caught for life. Out of darkness, 
You don't need no man to be the God you are. And in your mercy, you call us your own. You are God, you are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God, you are God. There is none beside you, Lord. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. So we say, be lifted higher. Lord, be lifted higher. Oh, Lord, be lifted higher. Oh, Righteous and holy, oh Lord, be lifted high, be lifted high, Father, be lifted high. I am that I am, be lifted high, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Wow. Be lifted high, Lord. Be lifted high, Lord. Let's just declare our, our, our love for this Father in the beauty of his holiness. The Bible says in Exodus 23, 25, worship the Lord your God, and his blessing will be on your food and your water. I will take away sickness among you. Let's just say, Lord, my Father, we worship you. We magnify you. You are exalted. Be lifted high in our midst, O oh Lord, today. Be lifted high in our midst. Be lifted high in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. The Lord is mighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, wonderful woman of God. God bless you. More grace, more anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As your host, your co-host in the house, and um, my wonderful uh, Pastor Tracy. Pastor Tracy, please just introduce yourself briefly so that those that were not here yesterday, they will know you. Praise God. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And of course, it all depends on where you are connecting with us from. We are glad you are here with us. I am Pastor Tracy. I am a zealous woman to the core. I am passionate about the things of God. I'm married and a mother of one, my miracle. And of course, connecting to Minister Desiwa has been a great blessing to my life. And together we'll be doing great and mighty things. So stay tuned with us because the power of the Holy Ghost is about to do something great and mighty in your life. And of course, I am having a mandate right now. And what's the mandate? To reach out to the Spanish community. And God has given us someone here. So we are all out for the Spanish community. So Glory. put us in your prayer. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise Glory. God. Thank you so much, everyone. Praise I love God. you. 
Love you so much, woman of God. Thank you so much. And for those of you, I know just my name is Adesua Omorige Uge. I'm a member of Christ United Ministry in here in the UK. I'm an ambassador for Christ, the voice for the voiceless, an advocate of, for family, an author, spiritual speaker, a self identity code. But my main one is I'm an ambassador for Christ. My main is to go wherever Christ is needed. So here we are, and we are bringing this to you to bring healing, to remove the grave clothes as was commanded. Many of us have been given that new life, but the grave cloth is still there. We are carrying those old pain. We are carrying those trauma. So we are making sure for those that we are not here yesterday, we have it recorded. We will be, uh, once it has been edicted, we will be sending- Hello, Mr. Uh, Desua. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh, she's showing you something, a copy. Oh, wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ah, we are, we are rich. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, say, that's uh, our Spanish um, our Spanish woman. She was the one uh, that spoke to us yesterday. So, she has just received a copy of my book, Leveraging Your Uniqueness. Hallelujah. How can you leverage your uniqueness when you have lost your sense of trauma? You don't even know how, what, you, how unique you are anymore. But today, through this, the Lord will bring deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us run with it because the time is far gone. I'm going to be introducing our next guest. Hallelujah. The Lord has blessed us. Uh, you know, sometimes you are thinking what the Lord has asked me to do. How am I even going to do it if I don't have what it takes? But the thing is, it's not about you. It's about the Lord, what he wants to do. As you are yielding, he's more than able to make all resources, all grace abound and available. So we have our with us tonight. Please, if I'm too fast for the interpretation, please slow me down. Sometimes I Yes, you are a little bit fast now. Sorry. Um, Maran, you have to forgive me. God bless you. Uh, please, I'm going to be a bit slower for the English speakers because we are interpreting into Spanish for the Spanish audience. God bless you, man. So um, we have a wonderful woman of God in our midst. She is a sister. She is a mother. She is a grandmother. She's lovely. Uh, she's wonderful, but above all, she's so humble. Uh, we, are, we attend the same church, our sister church in Northampton, and uh, every now and then we do speak uh, about general things because we have somehow like passion for people that are hurting. So she will be blessing us today, and she is a professional. It, from her, she's a great worshiper. I love it when she's worshiping. But tonight, today, we are going to be exploring her professional part because what God has given to us, it is meant to build His kingdom. Hallelujah. Her name is K. Osuya, but she's my professor because she has so much invested herself when it comes to academic those that know me that know that i love academics and i love people that have time to invest in their success so her name is Keosuya. she's an anointed worshiper a great woman of god but she'll be ministering to us through her profession she's a qualified brilliant health professional a public health consultant who has been working in the health sector for the past 18 years she specializes in mental health. She has her first degree in mental health. She has masters in sexual health. Like what was being talked uh, when we were discussing early this morning, you know, we we're talking about a few things. There are lots of things you might not have gone through it personally, but because of your studies, you have come uh, 
you have come across different kinds of situations that makes you more open-minded because those that are hurting, Jesus said he didn't come for those that are perfect, those, those that are not sick. He came for the sick. So uh, she's been there. She's uh, have a master's in sexual health and she's a member of the faculty Public Health UK. She is uh, actually right now uh, finishing her PhD on uh, public health consultant. So she very soon, uh, she's gonna be done with her PhD. So she have a whole lot of wealth of wisdom to share with us this afternoon. Uh, so in, in the area of health, yesterday we were being taught psychologically, emotionally, how our, uh, what, we, what we have been through manifest even in our character. The testimony we heard. Uh, please add me, watch out on other things. So those have been able to uh, help us to see. Today she's going to be tell, teaching us more on the physical health. And please take your pen and paper and let us uh, buy knowledge and let us um, acquire wisdom. God bless you. Prophet K, we honor God in your life. God bless you. The uh, platform is yours. Thank you, man. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, God, uh, woman of God. I uh, first of all, I just want you know uh, the uh, word of God says in the beginning there was a word and the word was with God. I just want to appreciate God for uh, allowing the woman of God uh, to give me the opportunity to be speaking to you today on this platform. So Antia Deshua, I say uh, thank you to you and also the founders uh, of this uh, you know beautiful official organization. I appreciate you uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. I also would like to, um, to thank uh, everyone who is tuned into this platform in any way on face on social media, Facebook, and who are all those who are tuned in onto this Zoom meeting as well. I just welcome you all. Uh, please just be advised that some of these uh, issues that I'm gonna talk about, you fi find out that have been already been discussed, touched on. Uh, yesterday by other professionals, but the, the, the information that we are sharing is, um, is about trauma. So some of the things interlink. So you cannot do the, do something with or the other without the other, they interlink. So I just want you to be aware of that. And whilst I'm talking as well, you find out that there are some information maybe that might come out to you and might have been an experience to yourselves. Like our sister had said, um, if anything like that happens to you, please get in touch. Yes, you can log off, but do not forget to just text even in here on this platform on Zoom. You can just say you're struggling and someone will be with you. Thank you so much. So this morning, going towards the afternoon. So you heard my name is Kay Osuya. I just wanted to correct something there. I'm not yet a graduate of PhD. I am an aspiring. So just mind, be mindful. I just like academics, but I'm getting old. I'm a, a grandmother of one. So just be, uh, just, just, just wanted to point out that. But first of all, I think maybe I've had yesterday from my psychology, from our psychologist, I just wanted to, to bring in the health pro, uh, professional perspective. What, how, how, what is trauma? What actually is trauma? What happens when we have trauma? Uh, the psychological, some of the things have been already been touched in the uh, psychology session last uh, yesterday, but we will still talk about it. You know, for those who are not in, you can just jot some notes. So trauma, to my understanding, and other researchers found that uh, it is a deeply distressing or disturbing experience uh, that refers to emotional responses we have to the negative experience. So it occurs as a result of extraordinarily stressful event that diminishes or destroys your sense of security. And it involves a threat to life or your safety. So a traumatic experience exceeds your ability to cope. So when you're traumatized, your ability to cope is diminished and your ability to integrate your emotions 
involved with this experience also is diminished. This trauma will cause you to feel helpless and it will leave you struggling with upsetting emotions. You feel numb, you have upsetting memories, you develop some anxiety, you try to find out how am I going to cope with this? And on your own, sometimes it's difficult. So it can leave you feeling disconnected. Some people de-associate themselves from the real world, from other people, and they just felt you know, lonely and unable to trust others. But one thing that I want to mention to you about trauma, it's not about something that is in your head, but it leaves a real physical imprint on your body as well jarring your memory storage process and changing your brain functioning. I think we heard about that yesterday. When bad things happen, it can take time to get over the pain and for one individual to begin to feel safe again. Whether the event happened years ago or it happened yesterday, you can make a healing changes and move forward with your life, but it takes time. It is also important before I proceed uh, for individuals to remember that not everyone reacts to events in the same way or at the same time. Sometimes something that feels like too big to deal with to you, yeah, can be very traumatic to someone else. So when we hear about someone telling us that, well, you got to move on. How many times have we heard that statement? Move on, get over with. Remember, it's not that easy for some people. It is not easy. So I was just talking about the brain. Our brain is, <laughs> I was reading about this, is, is, is considered as our greatest supercomputer. So our brain is regarded as a supercomputer on Earth with a complex network of about 100 billion neurons. However, it cannot only great it is not, not only great about processing and organizing information it is fast very fast so every second somewhere between 10 to 640 trillion pulses are zipping through your brain this matrix carefully encodes and stores your memories and experiences collectively making up the unique mosaic of you so it identifies who you are so imagine what happens when our supercomputer experiences, experiences shock. We've got a magnet. You try to put a magnet on your, uh, on your on metal thing, like on your, on your fridge. There is shock. I don't know whether any of us has ever had, um, have you ever touched an electric current when your hands are wet and you are lucky that you're not electrocuted? Imagine that shock. So our brain, when they experience that kind of shock, when the supercomputers have led to a similar method of recording signals and encodes traumatic memories, as pictures of our body sensation, this is called dissociation, where memories are split into fragments. So our memory is split into fragments and malicious fragments can manifest as symptoms commonly associated with post-trauma and increases our risk of becoming seriously physically ill. If these symptoms persist and do not decrease in severity, it can indicate that the trauma has developed into a mental health disorder called post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, there is a research that was done by some professionals, uh, mostly most research, our, our research comes from America. Uh, we've got some researches in the UK, but you find out most people, writers are from America. It shows that the trauma that, uh, that, uh, that affect, if you are affected by trauma before the ages of five or six, it is very predictive for developing a mental illness in a later age. We talk about someone's risk for mental illness. We refer to the stress diathesis model. We know that some people have got genetic predisposition or a or, or some condition, we could talk about schizophrenia or something, they know that we, you, you might at some stage develop these conditions because your grandfather or your great-grandfather had that condition. But having a traumatic experience will actually 
increase that predisposition for you to have another mental health disorder in your later life. What we do not know sometimes, what most people don't realize, however, is that this phase of brain development, right, does not stop at age 18. We've got our children now, and nowadays you said age of, um, uh, you know, a adult, when you're, adult, when you're, you're an adult, you're, you should be 18. But we stop, we, we forget to think that 18 is not the age where the, the brain does not stop developing until someone is in, the, in their early 20s. So the part of the brain that controls impulses and plans and organizes our behavior to reach a goal will continue to, to develop until the mid 20s. And the changes that take place in the brain during the early 20s affect how new experiences and the new pieces of information is synthesized in our system. So I want to talk to you about the types of trauma and then we'll go deeper into how it affects us. We have what we call acute trauma. This results from a single stressful or a dangerous event. And then we proceed to chronic trauma. This results from a repeated and prolonged exposure to highly stressful events. Examples include child abuse, bullying, or domestic violence. Imagine, I think I was just, when I was just reading about this, when I read about this, when I learned about this, in our life, we find that I will talk about mostly about domestic violence because it's a subject that I, I like a lot. How many times have we had in our families before when we were growing up? Our mothers, yeah, they have they are in a domestic in a in a relationship that is really fragile. We didn't see it as domestic violence at that time as children. We thought it was a normal thing because it was happening all the time. But our mothers will say, oh, they will be abused by our dads or the other way around. And they will say, well, I will stay for my children. There is a period of calmness when this doesn't happen, maybe because dad is going to the city, mom is in the village. And then after two months, dad comes back again, it happens. So those are the ones that I'm talking about chronic, that can cause chronic trauma. trauma. When this, there is a you know, prolonged exposure to highly stressful events, they are repeated and repeated over time that you do not have, you know, you, you can't come out of it. Then we have complex trauma, which results from exposure to multiple traumatic events. Yes, you've got domestic violence, you are beaten today, dad has gone away or mom has gone away. The next thing you don't have food on your table, the next, food, the next thing you don't have money to send your children to school. It becomes a lot of complexities that are actually involved in how you are going to deal with daily lives. So it becomes a complex trauma. Then we have secondary trauma, sometimes people say, call it vicarious trauma, in another form of trauma. But this form of trauma is when a person develops trauma symptoms from those contact with someone who has experienced a traumatic event. What I'm talking about is what about what and, uh, Sister Adesso was talking about. Vicarious trauma is, it develops when somebody experiences trauma after they have contact with someone who had experienced a traumatic event. So you can imagine, I have listened to my sister yesterday, Bishop talking about her experience yesterday. I can tell you that I went away, myself personally, I can have a testimony of that. I felt distraught on her behalf. Do you, if you get what I mean, I was actually pained by whatever she went through as if it was me, it was subjected to me. That kind of trauma can cause a trauma to another person. So that is what, you, what is called vicarious trauma. You manifest those, uh, those symptoms because somebody has experienced a traumatic event. So family members, mental health professionals, and others who care for those who've experienced trauma event are at risk of vicarious trauma. So sometimes you find psychologists, you find mental health nurses, you find any other professionals who work with people who have experienced trauma, picking up on those, on those behaviors or on those, they, they take the problems as their own. Instead of encouraging healing, they become victims of the trauma themselves. And then the symptoms often mirror those of post-traumatic stress disorder, but they don't come, you know, as a, as a, they're not severe as the post-traumatic stress disorder but they affect family. Just because my family member had this issue, it actually comes to you. 
We have heard about the causes of trauma, bullying, harassment, physical and psychological, sexual abuse, sexual assault, traffic collisions, childbirth, life-threatening illnesses, sudden loss, bereavement, being attacked, being kidnapped, acts of terrorism, natural disasters, war, witnessing trauma can actually cause trauma. So we just want to find out. I can tell you just one thing. Um, I am a mom of four. I had a condition called uh, hyperemesis gravidus. When I was given, when you know, it's called, it's a type of um, um, condition that causes severe uh, uh, vomiting in pregnancy. So you're always, you know, sick. You can't swallow anything. You can't do anything, and then it diminishes your body. You you lose weight. You you lose your appetite. You can't eat anything. You're always in hospital, and then you are subjected to all these funny treatments. It's um at some point it caused me a bit of a traumatic experience. And even now, sometimes when you think about it, oh, but you know, when you look at the child, you look, and you know, when I was giving birth to that child and all my four pregnancies were like that. So they cause trauma in the later event, but if you're not, if you don't deal with it, they'll manifest into physical, uh, physical illnesses. But um, sometimes when those things come, they, they, we have some responses. We have a sense of denial. We have uh, anger. We also have fear. We, are, we feel sad within ourselves. We have shame as well. We start to blame ourselves to say, well, yesterday Bishop was saying, I was at one point I was thinking that I was to blame you. She felt guilty that, well, it's, it's your fault. And you start to hear some voices. You know, the devil is a cunning individual. Start to put voices in your, in your head to say, well, it is your fault, it's your fault. You start having confusion, you start having anxiety. You start to have some form of depression and hopelessness, some irritability. You cannot relate with people. You have find yourself difficult to concentrate. You have outbursts, flashbacks. You start having nightmares, having dreams in the actual sense of maybe the experience you've had. And you can actually, some people can withdraw. Then they don't, they can't go out in public. They can't do anything. They can't do anything. They can't do something. Or they, some people can't leave their homes just because of some of the, you know, they are responding to trauma, which is really a very sad situation. So in, in our daily life, when you see somebody having those experiences, just try to reach out as children of God. I don't know whether everyone here is, uh, you know, is a, is a Christian, but for Christians, even if you're not Christian, if you see someone is withdrawn, somebody has been outcoming and now withdrawn, reach out to a sister. What is happening? What is going on? So, and then from there, I'll move on to the physical responses of trauma. Sometimes you start to experience headaches, especially migraines. They are the most common ones. And when you have a migraine, ah, I've suffered from my migraine before. That was actually a causative factor of, uh, of uh, COVID. You know, just having the fear of COVID, the trauma caused by COVID. I, had, I spent six weeks in bed because of headaches. And I went, they checked my eyes, they checked everything else. They said, everything is fine. They checked the ears. I ended up with a ruptured eardrum because of the headaches that were caused by the, the, the trauma that I was experiencing. But back in my mind, I didn't realize that I was responding to anything. So sometimes you do not know you are responding to something until something, some physical conditions manifest. So I realized the, the doctor said, oh, maybe this, this, this and that. And then I realized, oh yes, I was actually thinking about that. So if sometimes you start having tension headaches, the tension headaches start from the frontal and they go back. They catch your, 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 your back, your, your, your forehead, going to your back. You can't sleep, you can't bend down, you can't do, they can be very distressful. And you will be, that's a physical responsive trauma. Some people start having digestive symptoms. You start having like sort of, you can't, you can't do anything. You can't eat or you start having diarrhea or you, you, you can't have, you, you have constipation. Some people can't even go into the toilet just because of response to a trauma. And you are always feeling tired. Your body is drained. You don't have the energy to do anything at all. You are just exhausted. Some people experience a racing heart. Bum, 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 bum. Your heart is always on the beat. Palpitations. You are sweating a lot. You are feeling jumpy. You know, when you're feeling jumpy, unsteady suspiciousness when something gets boom 
it reminds you of the that experience that somebody caught you when you were not aware. So you think, oh, maybe there is something. And when a person feels like they're in constant state of alertness, this, this might make it difficult to sleep. You end up having insomnia. Others might go on to develop other mental disorders such as uh, such as uh, eating disorder, such as um, eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating, personal disorders, which constitute of antisocial, paranoia, borderline personality disorders, or some mood disorders, major depressive disorders. Some people will go into manic depression, some will go into just depression. And there's another one that is um, cyclomivia, emotional ups and downs. That one is, they are not as extreme as the bipolar disorder. If, if you know bipolar disorder, bipolar disorder is a condition uh, that affects, it, it, it's a mood disorder that comes in when you, you have like, sort of your, you start on the high, you just on the go. You want to do things, doom, 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 doom. If it, you got a bank card, women, we know, I know. When I'm stressed out, I take my bank card and I go online and I shop. That was my, my indicator. I start to, you know, buying, 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 buying stuff and I store clothes. And then I realize, mm, no, 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 this is not right. I think I need to retain these clothes where they're coming from. And then you go to a point whereby when you have actually phased out from that phase, boom, you go low. That is the dangerous phase because then you start to have symptoms like suicidal thoughts and all sorts. But this cyclomethia I'm talking about, it's, it's, it's when your mood is noticeably shifts up and down from your baseline, but it's not as severe as the mood disorders that I just spoke about. You start to have anxiety, social anxiety, you start having phobia, being avoidant, generalized anxiety. Some people may develop a habit of using substances, whether legal, when I say whether legal substances, I'm talking about prescription drugs. You got prescription medication that you got, and you think that, well, if I take two or three, four, that will allow me to sleep more, you are now abusing that um, substance. Then we have illegal substances. You start smoking cannabis. Some people start more, you know, taking um, over-the-counter medication. Some people are buying it from other people. Who are, I, I get a, like sort of, let's say I get a diazepam for my anxiety. I meet a friend who is out there. They say, oh, do you, can you sell? Do you know that, you know, people are doing business with prescribed medication? I can sell a... A, a, a diazepam tablet, it's called a benzodiazepine, diazepam for nine, six pounds a tablet. So imagine I've got a, a, a box of 28, uh, six pounds a tablet, that's 28 times six, that gives me something else and I'll go and buy a stronger um, you know, drug. That will affect mental health, okay? That will affect our physical health. So I would I would like to, in the times of stress, like uh, our psychologist said, the body releases hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol, and it increases our breathing and heart rate. So, you know, an extended period of stress can keep these chemical levels high for a prolonged amount of time, which can lead to high blood pressure. So you start having BP, you start to have inflammation, yeah? And conditions such, you know, such cardiovascular diseases, arthritis, asthma, chronic pain, diabetes, and you know, like I said, some children and adults will, you know, to alleviate the pain of the trauma, that is, you know, there's, there are some things that are classified as health risk behaviors. This can include eating unhealthy stuff. So imagine if you're eating unhealthy stuff, you develop or you start becoming big. When you become big, you are prone to diabetes. When you're prone with diabetes, you are now have got a physical health issue that is not controllable sometimes. You start to smoke, which increases the risk of cancers, throat cancer, uh, nose cancer, mouth cancer. You start to abuse substances, like I said, which can actually use loot overdoses and to even leave, lose, you, you know, uh, they can actually lead to death. Or engaging in sexual activities, which exposes you individual to sexually transmitted diseases. So you end up with sleeping with somebody now, and then the next thing is, boom, you've got a sexually transmitted disease. That's a physical health condition. I can give you an example of somebody who experienced trauma when they were growing up, that a person that I looked after in my profession. Uh, this girl um, was raped several times by somebody they trusted in the home. 
And she tried to tell the mom and the parents that this was happening, but they were protective of that person, or maybe they were not protective, but they didn't want to believe her. So she developed this kind of uh, trauma in her senses, and then she ended up in hospital at one point. This girl, do you know what she used to do? That might surprise you, but that was how she coped. She used to insert razors into her private parts. Yeah. And then she will go out. And then she will have sex with people. So imagine you are not aware that somebody has got a weapon secreted down below. And this man, I'm sorry to say this, but it was happening. And then the, the a man, normally we know that they have an erection. So it increases the chances of the razor slashing you out. Yeah. So he was actually saying, okay, I've been raped before. So if someone tried to do this, they are going to face the consequences. So it was a way of trying to protect herself. At the same time, she was trying to fix people who just want to sleep around. So imagine your, your husband has gone out there and he's tried to have you know, some fun with some people. And then the next thing, there are, there, there are men who would be slashed out. How will you explain, explain to people, to, you know, to your wife or to your spouse that, well, look, this is what has, what has happened to me. But this is an example that, uh, that, that, can, that, can, uh, that can happen on how other the people deal with, uh, with, their, with their traumas. And we have got uh, when to find help. When do you find, when do you, when do you think that like, I am going to get help from my physical conditions. Several treatments can help people with trauma to cope with their symptoms and improve their quality of life. We have some therapies that are, that, that are available. So like CBT, DBT, and all sorts. And we have some eye movement desensitization and processing, some somatic therapies. We have some experiences, acupoint stimulation, touch therapies. We've got all other, you've got- Eloma, Eloma, you are going too very fast for me. Too oh, very, so sorry about very that. fast. Maybe because <laughs> I literally want to apologize because I just received a warning that I need to round up. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. And uh, because okay. you are using using technical words, uh, and I cannot really like ubicate uh, in Spanish, so it makes it more complicated for me when you run. <laughs> okay. My apologies. Let me go no. back. When to find help? We've got therapies. Yeah. First line treatment. Uh, for my my view as a professional, I do not want people to jump into medications because med medications come with a lot of other physical health issues. Yeah, so I I I recommend therapies. Therapies. So therapies is a first line treatment for trauma. Ideally, an individual will work with a trauma informed or a trauma focused therapist. Okay. So these therapies can be CBT. That is very good as well for, for dealing with traumatic experiences. Then we have what we call the eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Eye movement desensitization and reprocessing is another common trauma therapy. Then we have somatic therapies. Some therapists use somatic or body-based techniques to help the mind and the body to process the trauma. And then we have somatic experiencing, whereby the therapists are involved in helping the person to relieve the trauma memories in a safe space. Then we have sensory motor psychotherapies, whereby the therapy combines psychotherapy with body-based techniques to turn the trauma memories into source of strength. Then we have acupoint stimulation. I don't know whether some people have had acupuncture. It does help a lot. This involves a practitioner applying pressure to specific points of the body, which induces of states of, or states of relaxation. Like I've had myself, I've had um, when I was having the headaches, I had acupuncture whereby they put some tiny little needles into my, into my head. And since that time, I have never had an, a, a migraine again. So some, for some people, it does work. So we have also touch therapies. Other touch therapies include Reiki, healing touch, and therapies such as touch, touch therapy. Some people are given some soft balls. And normally, you find out that, well, in people with learning disability, they normally use that a lot. Most people have got anxiety or trauma. 
they've got some soft toys that they use. And then we go to medications. Medication alone cannot cure trauma, but it can help a person manage their symptoms, such as anxiety, such as um, you know, sleep disturbances or depression. A person should talk to the doctor about their options. You need to talk to your uh, practitioner about your options. And then we've got self-care. Um, self-care. Practicing self-care can help an individual to cope with emotional, psychological, and physical symptoms of trauma. For example, self-care for trauma, including exercise. We encourage people to take exercise at least 30 minutes a day. You can do exercises. Even if when you're cooking in your kitchen, you can do some of the exercises. You can take a walk. You can go swimming. You can do fight or flight response. Exercise may help to mitigate some of these effects. Individuals can aim to exercise for at least 30 minutes a day for most of the week. And then we've got what we call mindfulness. It's a breathing and you know breathing technique and other mindfulness-based exercise can ground people in the present, which can stop them from relieving the traumatic event. We also encourage people to connect with others. Withdrawal from others is a common symptom of trauma. Moreover, co connecting with friends and family is important. I am really glad I'm here today talking to women and you know, women of God and non-women of God or in this midst, because I feel I'm connecting with other people, engage with other people. Some people will feel a benefit of disclosing trauma to other people, but you don't have to do that all the time. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Just pardon me, I've got a few things, just a few things that I still need to add on if you allow me to. And you need to have a balanced lifestyle as well. A person with trauma may find it difficult to relax or sleep well. However, sleep, relaxation, and diet all play a role in our systems, in our physical and our mental health. If possible, a person should try to sleep seven to nine hours for an adult. I know this is not possible, but it can be done. Make sure that when you're working, you need to have to sleep, yeah, at night. Eat a balanced diet. Avoid alcohol, avoid drugs. Release stress with a mindful and enjoyable activity. Support is necessary. People can ask for support from others. That includes talking to a person you trust. But I think in our, in our communities, we find it very difficult if we had lost trust in people. To begin to trust people again, it takes time, but it's something that is doable. And another thing, least, last but not least, that should be our first priority, finding God. If you are a believer, have a personal relationship with God. We need God's gospel to, su to, 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 to suffer well. We need it every day, and we never more than when life hurts. I have actually, for me, I like getting into the biblical thing, and I, I actually relate to Psalms 41, verse, Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. So that kind of thing, when you go to your Bible, if you're a believer, you quote on those scriptures that may have a meaningful life that gives you a positive vibe. You know, speak to those and pray over them and pray over them. It does not matter. It can be repeated and repeated and repeated. It's so good. You can read. Wow. I, I, I get help also. Isaiah 43 verse 19. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now yes. it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Hallelujah. Yeah. So I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers uh. in the desert. So do you see now? You God is telling you that you know He's doing a new thing to everybody who is here. God is doing a new thing in your life. Amen. God is working in you, and God is gonna grant you peace. Amen. Just to conclude, just to Amen. conclude. Yes. Suffering and trauma are not strangers to most of us. Just remember that. Every day we hear stories in our, of our pain. Don't think that, well, the cast is here. He's talking about it. He doesn't have pain. He doesn't have some past trauma. I've got my own past trauma and I have got ways to deal with them. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to, to walk alongside people as they work through their difficult times. I pray that everyone hearing this will find everlasting peace and happiness from within, knowing that you are not alone in this journey. You have others. And above all, you have God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. 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 Thank you. Powerful. 
powerful. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you. That is wonderful. I hope we are taking notes. I know it's a lot that have been unpacked. And I know she has so much more because we are discussing that, but time is always the issue. So please be prepared because we are going to go away for a retreat. We want, we, 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 this is process we're going to be navigating a, but we are going out free and strong. We will fulfill our destiny. We are running after our destiny and nothing, no trauma can stop us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope you are blessed. I'm not seeing messages on the, on the chats. Just be, be, make it busy. Let the people give it out. Know that they are, they are, they, they are impacting. I know sometimes it can be so, huh? Well, yeah, that is what knowledge brings. It brings liberation. So we just want to thank God for you, woman of God. We want to thank God for the grace of God upon your life. We want to say thank you so much for sharing with us that great uh, wisdom nugget. I know you have availed yourself for every time and every moment we need you. And we know the Lord himself will increase you. He will empower you. He will make room for you and he will amplify your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. As you have mm -hmm. availed yourself, the Lord himself will raise men for you. You will mm -hmm. never lack. You will never be found wanting and you will never mm -hmm. be desolate in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. We're not going to talk too much because our time is so, so uh, constrained. But I just want to remind you of this, everyone on the platform and those that are connected with us from other uh, social media platforms on Facebook, on YouTube. Listen, the word of God say in Isaiah 41, 10, do not fear for I am with you. That situation might be so horrendous, but remember he is with you. Do not- Please, Ma, can you say that again? Is that your word? 41 verse 10. Hallelujah. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. Hallelujah. I will strengthen you and help you only if we yield. Yes, it might be so difficult. Yes, we might, experience, we might have experienced those disappointments, those that are supposed to cover us, those are, that are supposed to protect us, those that are supposed to be the one that are, are, are the one that are to guide us. But let us remember they are human like we are. But there is one who is your creator. He is there. He will never leave or forsake you. His word makes us to understand. I will uphold you with my righteous hands, right hand, with my righteous right hand. So, listen, I know we have heard a lot, but remember, God is, he, he knows. He knows, and He wants to use that your story for His glory. Please. As you are learning, don't let it go to waste. Let it bring deliverance. Let it bring, bring the, the liberation. Above all, let it bring freedom that you become an agent of freedom, an agent of transformation. That when you are now giving your testimony, the Bible said we overcome by the blood and the word of our testimony. By the time you say, ah, Jesus brought me out of this. It brings, you know, yesterday, lots of us, we are able to get to that point and we, the lead was lifted. Hallelujah. The lead was lifted. What the enemy thought is a shameful place for us. When he has put us under and saying, ah, you can't open your mouth. A lot of us have found an opportunity because the woman of God was talking about her experience was giving her testimony with lots of joy because God has given us freedom. Praise God. So we are going to quickly move to the next. Uh, she was to uh, talk to us before, but she's going to give us a brief testimony as well, just to expand or just to buttress what our 
great uh, woman of God have just explained to us that somebody who have gone through it, because I know you also, one way or the other can relate. Because when it comes to this headache that is coming from nowhere, you say, why am I feeling headache now? What is wrong with me now? So we can see that sometimes all those worry, all those things, sometimes it's the secondary trauma. It's not even the one you have gone through. It's the one you have experienced. It's the one you have heard. It's the pain of another person you are carrying that could weigh you, weigh you down. Praise the Lord. And as long as we dwell in the world and connect with the Holy Spirit, following the right step, we will be liberated and the enemy cannot stagnate our work with God in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our next, um, our next woman of God will be giving us a brief testimony of how this whole thing have happened uh, physically. Praise the Lord. She's a woman that the Lord is using in spite. Not just using, using powerfully. Before I introduce her, I just want to tell you something. How I come connected to her is by the Spirit. I remember in 2017, I was going through one of those moments that I'm saying, Lord, if you don't do it, I don't know how, because your name is at stake. I don't even know what I'm going to do about the situation, but I'm leaving it in your, at, in your hand because I'm done. I can't even pray. So it is left for you to carry me through. It is left for you to pray me through because I now hold on to uh, that says that even our groaning, hallelujah, it is taken up by the Spirit as prayers. So I was so in that moment that I can't even pray. And what will I get? This woman of God was not texting me. I was not saying the Lord is saying this. The Lord said, I should tell you this. The, Lord, the Spirit of God said, this is just, I am with you. The Spirit of God said, I'm carrying you through. I said, who are you? And how on earth? So I took my phone, I called her. And she couldn't talk. She was like, ah, ah. I said, what? Then I look at my phone. I said, what is wrong? She said she was, she is uh, in A and E, what's the emergency? She's an in, in intensive care. I said, then what business do you have? So, uh, writing me, he said, but the spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you this. I can't speak because I'm very sick, but the spirit of the Lord uh, wants you to know he is with you, praise the Lord. So I just don't know that situation where you are. And you think, Lord, I don't have anything to do with you right now because I'm done. I have my own problem. But if you avail yourself, if you are yielding, he will even use the weak things to confound the strong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ah, I'm talking about my wonderful sister in the Lord, a great woman of God, the woman after God's own heart. Minister Pao Viola Mbewe. She's a conduit of love and instrument of peace. Pao walks the street of life using the agape, agape love of Christ rather than superficial love. Pao is a voice of hope in tumbled times, ushering the impoverished and marginalized into the greatness of Christ-like image, partnering with God as the wind beneath her wings. Pao exudes an innate quiet strength in Christ, displaying utter resilience as, this, as she soars above innumerable life storms and inexplicable obstacles that she consistently and consciously overcome by her immovable, immovable faith and unbreakable spirit. Power sets and flourishes in intercessory prayer with worship. She ministers from a place of pain in the refiner's fire as she remains rooted in the secret place. An intuitive spirit, power is mandated to love the marginalized, deemed unlovable, from brokenness to wholeness, engages in building bridges and resuscitating diminished hope. Founder of Deborah's Global Outreach, Power Outreach, founder of Deborah's Global Outreach, Power focuses on empowering for emerging economies, 
by equipping the impoverished and marginalized community on life, one life, one touch at a time. Hallelujah. She is a chartered accountant, master in leadership and management with special focus on emotional intelligence, a business strategist and a resilient coach. She's author of many books. May one be a um, <coughs> brokenness to wholeness. Pastor Paul Mbewe, my dear friend, God bless you and the platform is yours. We honor God in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we blessed, saints? Are we blessed? Are we blessed? We honor the Glory. Lord. Yes. We are blessed. We are blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, we have been fed. We have been propelled into greatness through knowledge. Knowledge is power. Information is liberating, said Kofi Annan, one of the models of African descent that spoke for many. But God promoted into glory at the appointed time. But he says knowledge is power. If we didn't have any of this knowledge that is being released to us by those that have been educated, equipped, learned to get rid of our ignorance, we may not have been better edified. I'm an example of a new learning. I had to unlearn my the norms that I was familiar to, to relearn a new norm. But before I go into that, I just want to honor the Lord as I bring my spirit into alignment. Malachi 3.3 3 talks about the Lord having his winnowing fork, separating the chaff from wheat. He keeps the grain on the threshing floor and then the chaff is blown away. It is burnt out, but sometimes for the grain to be refined, it takes a process, a process on the threshing floor. Such has been a journey that the Lord has made me become familiar to. The refiner's fire is what we go through, and many a time we don't even realize that God is purifying us for the greater good for his own very glory, because the suffering that we go through, the word reminds us that is only momentary yet greater is the glory that comes after the suffering and so i go through the refiner's fire now and again i remain on the threshing floor that is to encourage those of you that may feel you've been defeated you've been overcome there's been just far too much going on lord i can no longer lift my head the lord says i am a lifter of your head so i'm just gonna go through as i quieten my spirit engaging us all to be quiet in our spirit. I'm going to share a testimony, but I'm just going to sing this unto the Lord. We are on the altar here. If the altar is where you meet us, take us there. We are right there. If what you need is just an offering, it's right here. My life is here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're the fire, the refiner. I want to be consumed and I want to be tried by fire. Purified. Let's tap into that. You take whatever, Lord, take whatever you desire from all these lives. Lord, here is my life. Yes, if your glory wants to come in onto this platform, issues in tissue, if your glory wants to invade, Father God, we are saying release your glory. We are saying let it fall. Let's, we are saying, Father God, we are receiving your consuming fire. Set us ablaze. 
Yes, Lord. He wants to come in. Yes, Lord. Let it fall. We want it all. Your fire is consuming. Fill this place and set in a place. We'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're the fire, the refiner. We wanna be consumed. Clean our hands, purify our hearts. We wanna burn for you. Only for you, yes, Lord, take our lives as a sacrifice. We want to burn for you, only for you. You're the fire, the refiner. We want to be consumed. I'm going to share my testimony backwards. And so we are here speaking, trauma trapped. What? What are you talking about? That was my big question unto the Lord. My approach to life had proven dysfunctional. And unfortunately, this only transpired following a cause and effect analysis. It was necessary to identify, define, and resolve a sudden onset of an illness. It proved to be an ongoing ailment that I had to deal with 18 months down the line. It became clear that I had deferred dealing with my grief, possibly, infinitely, running away from it because I didn't want to face the harsh reality that befell me, which I found too excruciating to confront and nurse by myself. I could not nurse this on my own. Now, for the few of you that know me are aware that I live in the, U in the UK, but I'm a, originally a Malawian. I left my home country when I was 24. So I've lived away from Malawi for over three decades. That meant for every situation that I encountered that was close to my family, I would have to travel home. And I did travel quite a lot. I'm going to tell you that I'm the youngest that uh, was born out of a family of 10, uh, eight uh, biological children and two that had been incorporated into my family as uh, I, I would imagine in the lingo for today, adopted from my uncle and my auntie from both paterno and materno uh, families. But because I was born as the youngest, I knew us to be 10. By this point, I'm experiencing and positing this big question to God. I... I'm saying I have lost six older siblings. And so this became my reality. Trauma trapped is it? My body experienced severe trauma. I did nothing or things that were wrong to help it accept and acknowledge the reality that befell me. What I had implemented, proven to be short-term yet dysfunctional strategies. They were maladaptive because when I realized that I could not deal with that setting, I, I decided I was gonna take it in my own hands and tell my body to quieten and not want to grieve. I said to my body, we're gonna shelve the pain because I gotta do life. I had to look after six children who were young adults that were my own children as well as my sisters that became all my children and had six young adults to take through life, to support, to stand by, to say to them, we are strong and we're going to get through this. This was after a loss of my immediate older sibling, who also, for me, by the way, was my best friend. That was a twofold loss. She was the sixth death of my family members, my older siblings. As though in pretense, I decided to suppress the feelings. Why was this? It was my coping mechanism. I had to go through, uh, apply a mental block, emotional numbing, because the pain was too intense for me to deal with. The shocking discovery was that my strategies had backfired in time because the, God, the, the, the body, even though created in God's image, 
it still has to do life in the physical. And the physical normalcy that I had been familiar to had to be uh, cut off and realigned to a new normal. I had to begin to relearn a new normal. And so as a domino effect of what I had experienced, um, I realized that I now needed to give in and allow God to undo me so that in his own way, he will allow me to walk through that process of realignment, restoration, if at all, recovery. Because I'm experiencing a little bit of brain fog, sometimes cognitive impairment happens with experiencing trauma. And I'm reminding those of you that have been listening to the health professionals that have given theoretical knowledge. I'm coming in to prove that those theories that have been given actually do happen in practice. So I wasn't as aware at the time. I've had to learn, I've had to research, and I've had to understand. But I'm going to read an excerpt of something that I have written in the past. And so we had to move on as life determined. Fast forward, after Tony, who was my, my other sisters, who was my sister's twin, I had twin uh, older siblings just before me that were born. After he slipped away into God's arms in year 2004, uh, Vicky and I, my best friend, my sister, would always hold hands. And during his funeral, the preparation, we are the ones that went and picked up his casket. We picked up the correct color that he loved. We were sobbing and crying, but comforting each other. At least it were the two of us. When we were at home, we would pull ourselves away, go into the bedroom and sob and release ourselves and allow God to work through us, minister to us. And then from the bedroom, that was our, in our family, our parents' homes. Our original main bedroom as we were young. So it always cuddled us being in that space. So Victoria and I would go in there, would then come out because Tony Victor is no longer here. We don't have him. But we had to find a way of encouraging ourselves. We are yet to send him off. We sent him off. I came back away from home to abroad, my regular base. At intervals, we would ring each other. We would sob on the phone. I would pour out my heart. Beyond this, we used every memory. We pulled out a memory card at a time. We cried over him. Then we rejoiced. We thanked God for giving us the memories that we built in order for us to become. And because we became who we were, he had been in our, in our lives. Hallelujah. I'm just going to pause there for a minute because I'm noticing that Pastor Tracy is needing to translate. If the altar is where you meet us. We are going well, ma. We are going very well. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, seven years later, when I began to settle into life after Tony, suddenly my other counterpart, my companion, my soulmate, slipped away too, into God's arms. Boy, was I lost. She was no longer here to share with me. The innermost sting, the piercing deep pain that cut to the core. She was not here for me to share with. My heart could not cope. I had nobody to hold hands with. We couldn't run to the closet together. I felt like I lost sight. I lost me. I lost my very self. I lost my other self. The world became a strange place in those moments of just allowing the message to sink in. 
my world had crumbled before my very eyes. In an instant, yet the reality that was before me, it hit that I couldn't run away from it because actually I did intend to and I did attempt. Now I'm going to take you back to the moment that I was given this information. My husband had to call me while we were at home to just come into the living room with him. As my older siblings, my big brothers had informed him to say, the way these two were close, we don't know how she's going to handle this. Can you please get the church leadership or whoever her prayer partners to come in? And I used to pray with our reverend's wife. So reverend and his wife were called in. By the time I'm being told this information, I'm told reverend and wife are coming. I'm aware that's your prayer partner. They said you can't be given this information in your, in, on your own. But because they're about to arrive and I'm aware that it's going to be difficult when they're here for you not to know, we have lost your sister. I said no. I had both parents at this point. Do you mean one of the parents? No, I'm sorry. This is it. I practically left the seat in my living room. I walked outside the house. Now, I live on an incline uphill. That's where my house is stationed. I run, physically run, like a marathon, processing. What have I just heard? I run. It's probably three miles all round. I run uphill. At the end of our home are fields. I went near the fields. I went downhill. And then I went to the end of the road. I went into the main road. I connected to the next road. I went uphill, running. By this time, I'm on the phone and I'm calling my children back at home, my, my sister's children, to speak to any of the closest ones. As they are picking up the phone, they're just saying, let's pray for mommy. I'm realizing they probably haven't yet got this message that I have. Let's pray for mommy. I had to realign my message as I'm tapping into the Lord to understand what has really gone on. Anyway, gone past that point, eventually I go back home after running likely two and a half, three miles back to the house. Reverend and his wife are here. Another relation are here. I'm settling to process what I've just been taught. I run away, but my circumstances could not allow me to run away. Now I have six young adults as my children. I must keep going because we had already lost her husband 16 years prior to her. So I was the parent here. I was too broken to my knees. I felt like my tummy had been punched, crushed to the bones. I had the urge to throw up. That's the trauma that's being referred to by the professional here, Minister K. I felt a goiter in my throat. I couldn't breathe. I was feeling choked. It was too intense for me to process, to receive, to take. As life would have it, I still needed to do the needful in the physical. So I traveled. We sent her off. I came back to the reality back here. I spoke about maladaptive strategies that I adopted. Emotional numbing was how I functioned because I have the children to keep going. My children have just lost their backup mommy. Now I gotta be okay. I am mom for six young adults. I gotta do life. I am strong. I'm a goal getter. I achieve whatever I put my mind to. These two I'm gonna achieve. And I decided to do life. Mental block, emotional numbing, Grief, let's show you. I'm going to come back and deal with you later on when I'm feeling able. This happened because on one day when I arrived back and I tried to cry, I went so deep into the hole that bringing myself back away from home became almost impossible. That was going to be, I told myself, pal, you're not crying anymore. God is going to have to walk with you through this journey because to go back into that depth of hole, you may not come back. That was for me the practicality of how I built my body to function, yet it was a dysfunctional strategy. 
years prior had had a breast cancer scare. Uh, I had just, I was about to have my first born and while I was expectant, we went through various tests and I gave my sister the final test, the uh, picture of me in case I don't make it. You're gonna look after the baby, this is it. The final poem, I prepared her. The final this, the final cause, should it happen? I'm telling you, you know, you're gonna do this. I prepared her. I did not think that life would shortchange me and take her out. She hadn't prepared me for this. By the way, she's my big sister. Her shoes are too big for me to fit. How am I gonna do life? It was too impossible. So I had to find coping mechanisms. It's a lengthy story, trauma trapped. Emotional numbing became justifiable as an option for my survival. My world was a nightmare, not imaginary. A nightmare in reality, I wasn't dreaming. I would wake up to it myself and the children. Yes, we had parents, but I found that myself being the younger one needed to keep it together. My parents were at this point, my dad was in his late eighties and saying, why not me Lord? Asking me even when I, I went, why me and why her and not me? I said, Lord, I can't deal with that. The reality of the learnings that we are going through now is that these strategies for me were futile to my very body. I only learned a year later, actually two years later, because what happened a year later was something trapped my body. Out of nowhere, I became ill. Out of nowhere, the illness got worse. Out of nowhere, within two months of really feeling, I don't think I'm okay. And it wasn't my own making, my children had to say, mommy, you know, you're not as well as we normally know you to be. I had been having migraine headaches and I said to my children, it's the aftermath of the migraine headaches. They've been referred to. I need you to be connecting the dots from the learnings from yesterday and from now, as Minister Kay has just shared, connect the dots. Migraine headache, post migraine effects. That's why I'm slow. But I began to walk like that, see, as if I'm on the sea. I kept working. As you hear my history, the job that I would ordinarily do within my profession is high demand. It's intense. We're on the go the whole time. You're meeting deadlines. You're delivering reports. Nothing stops me. This time, my body stopped me. And so I had been reminded by managers at that point. I had been reminded by my children. You need help. They booked an appointment for me. I began to see uh, a, a general practitioner. Referrals were made. It took more than five months to uncover the initial problem. They suspected a brain tumor. Eventually, two years down the line, after suffering hemiparesis on my right, I had numbness and paralysis to an extent. Brain tumor had been cleared. Because I said to my children who were nursing me then, should that become positive? We have medical access and I'll be all right. Cause I didn't want to sound awfully spiritual, superficial or holier than thou. They were nursing me, taking me to the bathroom, doing everything. I could not feed myself even medication. They had put a pill on my tongue, help me drink water. I had to learn to squeeze a ball beyond diagnosis during rehab therapy. So I could not be telling them it's not gonna happen. I had to pray. In the prayer closet, I said to the Lord, daddy, my parents have just buried my 46 year old sibling. They are not burying me. I said, daddy, this is becoming too familiar. I'm not gonna be one of them. I'm not doing premature death. I gotta be all right. I'm gonna be healed. I'm gonna, I'm doing this in my bed, confined to a bed, confined to the couch. Long and short of this, I suffered from an ailment that trapped my body. And as we speak, it's now nearly 11 years, I still manage that ailment. I have cut that short in the interest of time. I believe that beyond this, we can speak outside this meeting room and share strategies because God has helped me research. Now, one thing that I did was within the uh, releasing myself to be able to function, there were certain things that I could not push away. Brain tumor had been cleared. I believe that was God's doing. 
emotional numbing. I had to go back, retrieve the pain to deal with it. I began to see specialists. I began to see a church counselor. I began to see a bereavement counselor. I began to release the pain. However, what has remained the reality is, as we speak, I still manage that condition. It has been defined as ME, chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS stroke ME, because in the US they call it ME. CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome, is defined as such here and in other countries. I've had to research a lot and I've written a lot about it. When I was doing my master's program, I was in the process of being unwell and I had to do part of the research to present supportive leadership um, uh, argument about how management could be on the side of their employees with an invisible illness, invisible illness, invisible disabilities, because these are disabilities. Emotional numbing, mental block, triggered paralysis, triggered potential brain tumor would have been whatever that is, trauma trapped. If we don't deal with it, it catches up with us. May the Lord continue to speak to us, to know that as we pray, we got to gather the knowledge. God has given us clinicians because he has equipped them with his wisdom. We pray for the seven spirits of God, spirit of wisdom. Where does wisdom come from? In the learning, spirit of understanding. It comes from you listening in and catching the knowledge, spirit of knowledge, spirit of, of, of power in his might that we can do things and do what he is asking us to do within our physical functionality while we are operating from the heavenly realm. We got to do what God wants us to do. When we are for the spirit of the Lord, it means that I can differentiate between what I need to do in the physical and what's happening in the spirit. While my, my herd is submerged in the heavenly places, I still got to write the exams in the physical in order to pass, even if it means me just going to go and prove them wrong. I've had to go and have another assessment for a potential um, a, a breast cancer. I needed to see the clinicians in order for the clinicians to tell me that it's not a breast cancer because we have now got the knowledge, they've got the wisdom, they've got the understanding, they can now give me cancer on how I need to manage myself. I ended up having the children. I did not die. I lived. My sister is the one that went ahead of me. But we have had to acquire knowledge, clinical knowledge. God has created clinicians to equip us, to empower us with knowledge while we are praying to him. We've got a twofold approach in doing life. We know that he will help us rise above storms of life. If I had a brain tumor, God would redeem me from it, but I would have needed clinicians to do what they need. So let's not diminish. Let's not tell them you are ill because you don't believe enough in God. I have gone through it. Have you got enough faith? I have gone through it. Let's stop judging the people. When somebody looks okay in their physique, they they may not be okay. Let's look at those that even got mental illnesses, mental disabilities. They are real. I've had to go through this and I'm here to advocate for those that are going through disabilities that are invisible in whatever form. Advocate for those that do not even want, know how to speak because I was even released from work, dismissed on the grounds of illness. For the same budget setters that I used to help, they released a, 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 a program that I needed to tap in on as a member of community, as a patient. I was not allowed. Now I'm advocating for the silenced, for those that don't have a voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us through this process to know that prayer and the word of God are equipping us to do what we need to do in the physical. In Jesus' mighty name, remain Amen. blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but... Hello, Minister, this one. Yes, ma Please, before you, you, you went, go on. Uh, there is uh, one point that uh, Pastor Powell is omitting. And I would like her to touch it, please, if it's not too much. Maybe right. with just two minutes. Right. Uh, the, the, the area that she had to uh, release uh, forgiveness uh, because of or uh, maybe we can talk one on one with her with uh, Mary. Yeah, let's go for one on one because she said right. that um, due okay. to time, uh, I believe a lot of people have related to what has been said. A lot of us are going, even as she was speaking, something came up when she said she ran. When my elder brother died, I said, no, he's not, he can't die. I remember. I walked, I was just, I, I, I was pregnant six weeks. I walked for two hours aimlessly. I was just going because, and then I now, I told myself, no, my brother cannot die. 
I was in denial. I was in strong denial. For a month, I was too scared to call Nigeria to, uh, to, to tell them, because in me, no, he didn't die. He can't die, you know? So when she spoke that, it really triggers that memory. Though it's been a long time ago, the daughter I was uh, pregnant with, she's over 21 now, but I, it, it takes me back to remember, I just went away. For a whole month, I did not call home. So a lot of people would have been thinking she don't care. No, I was too scared to accept what happened. I ran away from what happened. I was in denial. I said, no, my brother cannot die. So I didn't call. I didn't, I didn't connect. I was just on the run. Emotionally, I was on the run. So thank you so much, woman of God. Uh, a lot of us, like I said, this might trigger some uh, old pain. This might trigger some things that, please, if you are there, you're feeling overwhelmed, connect with us. I have my phone on my hand. We can, we can talk, we can chat. And uh, if you feel like maybe you just want to take a breather, you can log out a minute, take a breather, come back in. And um, we have professionals and admin, please put up my details again so that it will be renewed. Uh, Pastor Tracy, your details. Any other professional that want to be of support to any of the person that might be going uh, through any kind of uh, uh, triggers. So please, um, this is a situation whereby any one of us can be uh, touched. But the thing, the, mo the, 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 the target is for us to come out whole because knowledge brings liberation. The woman of God has spoken. If she had had this knowledge beforehand, she would have dealt with her situation in another way. The enemy would not, wouldn't have taken advantage of her ignorance. She thinking she wants to be strong and just shut it out. The enemy now found that way and quickly take advantage to strike her body. So the thing here is we are not fighting with an enemy who is not astute. He's been in this business long before Jesus was come to earth. So he knows the, 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 this situation more than us. And every time he sees any little uh, loophole, he take advantage to attack our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health. And that began to work against our destiny, our purpose in God. And that is what we don't want to happen because we don't want to leave this planet Earth and go back to God full of potential. We want to die empty. We want to release all that he has put in us. And how can we do that if we are not whole? if we are not healthy, if we are not uh, 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 in fullness of who he has created us to be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. May I just interject, uh, Minister Hades Siwa, just for a minute. Uh, if I can just add this, that people need to understand that a grieving process or any other dealing with various traumas take processes, it takes time. Sometimes you have to uncover. It's layer by layer by layer. It's like the onion you look at. You go deeper, you find something is still fresh, deeper, but the grace of God enables. It's just understanding that we need to tap in into whatever sources are around us and resources to utilize them. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, so let's take a breather. We are going to, uh, if you want to take a cup of tea, uh, like here I am, it's sunny. So get some cold water as a minister, the minister of God will be giving us worship before the next uh, woman of God will come in to teach us because she is going to be coming from a dimension where you know, all those things that we are seeing, it is spiritual. I just want to remind us again, those of us that is backsliding because of pain, 
Remember is the enemy's tactics to disconnect you from your father. It's only your father that knows your ways. He knows everything. Those of you who are connected with us and you don't have Christ Jesus, please, as we are around them, we are going to be calling you into Christ. The woman of God, though the enemy have a loophole, but because of Christ in her, hope, the hope of glory, she was able to overcome. And even when she was in the most uh, difficult moment, God was still using her in spite, and the devil couldn't do anything about it. So that is the grace we enjoy in Christ, that when the enemy think he had us bound, the Lord would turn all his evil for our good. He turned it around for our good to the glory of his name. So that is the joy we enjoy in Christ. That is not like we don't experience what others experience. The thing is, we have a God that gives us uh, victory over every situation that comes our way to defeat us. So we might experience defeat, but we are never defeated because we are more than conqueror. Hallelujah. I'm going to be calling on Evangelist Kate to give us uh, a worship song. Please take a breather, drink something before the next woman of God will be coming in. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate my wonderful mama, Pastor Marian. She's on the yeah. platform. She's uh, my pastor, Mrs. God bless you, ma. I appreciate each and everyone. I can see everybody. Mrs. Shahi, thank you. You are all appreciated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, ma, how many minutes are we having to come back here? We are having five minutes. We are. Five, five minutes. Yeah, we are. Uh, uh, Evangelist Kate, are you ready to give us worship? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Man. God bless you all, great women of God. I appreciate you. God bless you, the Lord. Woman of God, God bless you for that powerful message. May the oil of God in your life not run dry in Jesus' name. Yeah. I welcome everyone. I welcome everyone. I salute everyone that is here. May the Lord continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our God has been faithful. We all wake up well this morning. May his name be praised. Many slept last night. They didn't wake up. So just let's be in mood of worship. Let's thank him. Let's appreciate his goodness over our life. You know be man, oh. You know be man, oh. When you hop on sad on no man can show. You know be man, oh. You know be man, oh. You are the God of everything, no one like you, no one like you, Jesus, no one like you, faithful God, no one like you, no one like you, Abba Father. You are the God of everything. Daddy, no one like you. Thank you, Lord. You are the God of everything. No one like you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we declare that we love you. We declare our hand everlasting love for you. Ocean Divine, we declare. Father, we declare that we love you. We declare our everlasting love for you. Yes, Lord, we declare. 
Oh, yes, Lord, we declare that I will love you. We declare our everlasting love for you. Oh, yes, Lord, Jehovah is your name. Oh, shine divider, Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah. Is your name. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. There is none like you. Oh, Jehovah. Is your name. Amen. Oh, we worship you. We give you all the glory, Lord. You are the reason why we are living. Alpha and Omega, you are the most I God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are the reason why we are living. Oh, Shane Divider, you are the most I God. Hallelujah. You are the reason why we are gathering, Lord. You are the most I God. Amen. You are the reason why we came thus far. Oh, you are the most high God. Oh, Thank Lord, you, we are Jesus. grateful. May your name be praised. You are the reason Hallelujah. why we are You are the reason why Hallelujah. we are gathering. Hallelujah. May your holy name be praised in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone. I know that uh, we are all blessed. I know the time is coming, but we thank God for what He is doing in our midst. Amen. Thank God what He's doing in our midst. Please uh, add me, mute everyone that is not supposed to be talking now, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our next uh, speaker. Uh, I have come to love her so much. She is a woman that I met on Facebook, but I realized that I connected so much with her ministry. So I started following her and I resonate so much with uh, everything she was doing. And um, at the time I reached out to her, I said, uh, no, at the time I, we were praying for a guest speaker and um, I didn't know, and I, I, I had the, um, the assignment to be the one to uh, get the guest speaker. So I said, Lord, who will be the guest speaker, the right person for this? So I was praying. And one day, I was, as I, I, I just finished praying and said, Lord, you're the one. I don't know now. There were lots of names, but nothing really bored my heart. Then I went on Facebook, and she was speaking. Then I went back, I started going through her profile again. I said, but this is Facebook. Will she even answer me? So I said, but have you tried? So I, don't, I just texted her on Messenger. I said, listen, woman of God, I have this urge. I have this um, uh, leading and uh, we're having a program. Will you honor us to be the one? This is our topic. You know, she was so excited about it. And after we got talking, she said, you know, you are an answer to my prayer. Praise God. Who is that being resonated to? You are an answer to my prayer. Because she has been praying to God for the Lord to expand her territory. Hallelujah. And who would have, who would have known? that the Lord was going to amplify her voice in Europe. She is from the United States. Through Facebook, some of us, we are not a very uh, friend. We are not a friend of uh, Facebook because sometimes it, we think it's a time waster, but depend on what you use it for because our ministry has really blessed me. 
It has been empowering. And I know that through her connecting to me, a lot of people are connected to her platform and are being blessed as well. I know she being connected to us. I remember one day she ministered to us on our church platform and our general overseer prayed over her and declared over her. Praise God. So it has been of mutual benefit. I'm just saying this, some of us, that through trauma, we have decided never to connect with anyone. We have decided to walk ourselves in. Please don't. Because our father is a social, he created us as a social being. And the, the way for us to be able to really uh, bring about his praises is by connecting with others. So I'm honored, we are all honored to have this great woman of God in our midst today. And she's going to be blessing us with what the Spirit has given to her. Her name is Angie Wine. She's Pastor Angie Wine. She's a teacher. She's a speaker. She's uh, an author. She's a licensed pastoral counselor. This is uh, something that is lacking a lot in the body of Christ because we need that knowledge to be able to expand and dig deeper to expose the lies of the enemy. And she also, she's also the facilitator of the house of Elijah, Elijah uh, of the house of Elijah. She, her ministry is Andy Wine Ministry and Andy Wine Media, because through her media, she deal with some solid stuff that normally uh, we don't talk on the pulpits, but with that is being exposed, hallelujah. So her ministry is to help people experience healing, hope and growth through the Holy Spirit from the lies that the enemy has spoken to stop us from fulfilling our destiny that the Lord has given to us by getting to the roots of the lie. Angie exposes it in love and rebuilds the foundation with the truth of the word of God. Her mandate is to help you walk in freedom, both individually and in your relationship by uncovering the identity of who you are in Christ Jesus. Woman of God, we thank God for your life. I hope you have not been locked out by this internet that is giving everybody challenges. Okay, you'll stay there with us. We yes. thank God and we honor God for your life. And we want to say you're welcome. So with uh, a hand of applause, we say, God bless you. Thank you for honoring us. And the Lord honors you too in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. The platform is yours, man. God bless you. Amen. Hello, hello, my sisters in Christ, my beautiful sisters in Christ. And thank you so much, Adesua, for your, not just the introduction, but for your love for me, for our love for each other as sisters in Christ. Who would have thought that the Lord would bring us together in this way? He is, he does amazing things. And I'm so happy that we are on this journey together as well as the other speakers who have gone before me. I have been so blessed and my heart is so full that there is a platform, that there is an organization, that there is a group of women who are committed to know and understand what the Lord has for us as far as our healing from the events that have occurred in our lives, that certainly was not his best for us, but because of the evil in the world and the frailty of humanity, it has come to us. But he is a God who loves us. He is the one true and living God. And he has plans that the enemy cannot thwart. We have to journey. We have to take a path to get there. But he is faithful and he has never left us or forsaken us. And I'm so glad about it. So again, welcome to everyone on this platform. And my prayer today is that there will be a word for your heart, for your mind, 
for your soul that will deliver you, deliver you from the trauma and from the lies and from the pain that you have felt as a woman. There are so many things that I can tell you about womanhood that is so profound. And I pray that Holy Spirit will lead us in the time that we have together for me to share those things. So the first thing that I want to share with you uh, about this meeting that we have is in Malachi, and we will get in the Word, so I want you to get your scriptures out so uh, or your pen and paper so you can document. The Word in Malachi 3, 16 through 18 says, Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. I want to repeat that to you because if the enemy is coming to tell you that this is not uh, going to help you or this is just women getting together, no. This word says, though, because of coming together and talking about him and the and uh, understanding what we want to know about the fear of the Lord, a book of remembrance is written. And verse 17 says, though they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more, you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. So may the Lord add a blessing, not only to his word, but to our union together. And I have great expectancy that we all will be changed because we are his. That's what the word says. We are his. And through the professionals and through the word of God, and through the union of us together, our hearts and our minds and our lives will be changed. Amen. Amen. So let's amen, get into this. Amen. 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 So issues in the tissues. And I want to just share with you four points that I believe that the Lord has given to share with you today. Uh, the last will be an illustration, and so just, just go with me. Number one, God designed us to heal. In his Amen. sovereignty, in his wisdom, God designed us to heal. Not just physically, not just emotionally and mentally, also spiritually, all of those things. He designed us to heal. He is that wise. He is that knowledgeable. He is creator God. Many of us, when we were children, when we went outside to play, we got on that bicycle or, or playing ball outside with our friends. If we had a, a fall and we got a scrape or we got a wound somewhere, you know what? We felt the pain initially. But if you were five years old, and of course, we're, we're seasoned women today. <laughs> we don't feel that pain anymore. The scar may be there. We may have a memory of it, but the pain is not there anymore. God, in his graciousness toward us, in his love toward us, in his wisdom, designed us to heal. So I don't want any of us to go away with the lie of the enemy that we cannot heal. We can't ever get over this. We, it won't ever be right. Yes, it will. Because the God who loves us designed us to heal. I want you to uh, jot down these scriptures. I'm going to read them to you. Psalm 145, verse Verses 18 through 20, Psalm 145, verses 18 through 20, says the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. 
He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. Don't get that that there are black. Can you hear me? Yes, we are hearing you. Okay. Verse 20. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. So he hears us, he saves us. The word in Malachi says he gives attention to us. He writes a book of remembrance about us. He loves us and he wants to heal us. Psalm 147 verse 3 says he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. That's a scripture that many are familiar with. Pastor, can we get the last scripture, please? Yes, the last scripture is, uh, well, I did 145 verses 18 through 20. And the last one is 147 verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. All of us have been brokenhearted before, whether it's through abuse or the loss of relationships or through the trauma of losing someone through death suddenly, we have all been brokenhearted. But this word says, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. I'm so thankful for the word of God. I love the word of God. And if you are, are on your journey in, in your Christian walk, I would just admonish you to get in this word. The word, the Lord is sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. And his word is healing. It is life. His word is life to us. And so I, 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 you'll see me go to the word a lot. So I want to tell you that besides being a pastoral counselor, my career is as a physical therapist. I've been a physical therapist for 37 years, and it has, it has been quite a, a, a life in healthcare. I was just face-to-face -face with lots of COVID patients over the last two years, helping them to get stronger, helping them to get better. Also, unfortunately, witnessing a lot of death and a lot of, of struggle in, in the physical sense of, of uh, that terrible, terrible disease. Um, I used to do wound care a lot in physical therapy, but now we have skilled nursing teams that do wound care. But I remember uh, one of the greatest uh, opportunities I had to work with a patient who had a wound had been bitten by a brown recluse spider. And sh she was bitten on the top of her foot and her skin just erupted and opened up <clears throat> just like, uh, I, I can't even describe it to you. We, we have Outback here, which is a restaurant and a blooming onion. And it was just, it just opened up as that spider had bitten her and the poison went in. So I wanna to talk to you about having a wound in your soul and how that parallels to a physical wound. When that lady came to seek help for us for that spider bite and that wound that had taken place in her, um, in her body, on her foot, the first thing she had to do was to expose it to us. She had to get her foot where we could see it and we could understand what was going on in her body. It's the same with mental and emotional wounds. And, and my previous uh, ladies who have spoken before on this platform have said, you must expose it. You must tell people about your hurts and your fears and the trauma that you have experienced, it must be exposed. The enemy wants us to hide. And what happened in Genesis after sin, man and woman, Adam and Eve wanted to hide 
we must not hide. We, we have to expose, of course, to people who are trustworthy, but we have to expose that pain and the suffering. Just like the lady with the spider bite, we couldn't have helped her if she didn't expose the wound. We couldn't have helped her. So the next thing that has to happen is it has to be cleaned out because infection immediately could set in. So you have to submit to the one who knows and understands what the possibilities are if that wound is not uh, addressed, if the possibility of infection is not addressed. So what we did was with the lady with the spider bite is we, she exposed it, she let us see it. And then we got her into a pool of water to clean out the wound and to begin the process of dealing with the infection. And let me tell you ladies, let me tell you ladies what's so important about the water. The Bible says that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I'm so glad about it because you know what? When I was broken, when I was lost, when I was thrown away, rejected and abandoned, the Lord sent people who had in their bellies, bellies rivers of living water. I was thirsty and I drank. And I took it in and it began to get the, the beginnings of the a journey of getting that infection out of my soul. I want you to hear me, ladies. We need each other desperately. We do, which is why I'm so thankful for this platform and for this invitation to share. So you expose the wound, you clean it out with the water. And then you put the medicine on it, which is an extra thing to help the infection to go away. So you, you, and then you want to start to heal it with the prevention of infection, the wound will start to heal. So, and you, then after you do that, you cover it so that the, in, so that things in the atmosphere or around that wound doesn't want to infiltrate and start infection. So how do we do that with emotional and mental and spiritual wounds? Well, the healing comes through Holy Spirit. He's the doctor, he's the great physician. It comes through deliverance ministry. It comes through the word, it comes through prayer. That's the medicine. That's the medicine for the wounds that we have inside of us. So the infection, the, the, the pain won't increase so that the demonic activity won't move in and, 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 and be um, something that we have to contend with as well. Jesus said, when the enemy comes, he will find nothing in me. And so we want to be free of infection. We want to be clean. We want to expose our wounds so that we can get the help that we need. Amen? Amen. So I want you to understand that there is help. And the lady that is in the Bible that is so profound in this way, her story, is the woman with the issue of blood. And I want you to start to turn with me to Luke chapter eight. And it starts in verse 43, Luke 8, 43. And the Bible says, and there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment and immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, who was it that touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, master, the crowds surround you and are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. For I perceive that power has gone out of me. 
And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him and declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had immediately been healed. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. This Amen. is so full of life for us. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I got to tell you some things. Listen. The, God doesn't waste anything in his word. The number 12 is so significant. This number 12 is the number for foundation. There were 12 disciples, there were 12 gates to the city. This means that this was not just a circumstance or an event in this woman's life. This means this was her foundation. We don't know how old she was. Uh -huh. We don't know anything like that but we we know that she was bleeding for 12 years i want to say to you you may feel like sexual abuse or rejection or abandonment is your foundation but by the time we get to the end of this scripture you're gonna be shouting because i got something to tell you about that you are able to be free from the foundation that the enemy laid in your life. You are able to be free from that and you will get a blessing beyond your comprehension. So I want to lay that foundation to let you know that some of you have believed the lie of the enemy that this is the way that you're always going to be because it is the foundation of your life. But that is not true. It is not true. Let me tell you something else. Here, let me tell you how um, the Lord just, uh, the mysteries of God are so evident in the scripture. Let me tell you about women. The thing that distinguishes us from a man is that we have a womb. What does a womb do? Well, it does two primary things. The one thing that we understand that a womb does is that it births babies, okay? That's, that's biology 101. But also what a womb does is that it births vision. There is nothing in the whole entire universe that has happened that has not been touched by a woman. If there is the greatest astronaut, it's been birthed by a woman. If there's the greatest chemist, that chemist was birthed and nurtured and brought to life by a woman. If there is the greatest mathematician, that, that mathematician has been touched and nurtured and birthed through a woman. Jesus himself was birthed through a woman. Do not believe the lie of the enemy that the, your pain and your bleeding from a womb is your foundation. That is not true. It's the enemy that wants to steal the destiny of your birthing vision. It is not God. It is not God. And he can reverse that in us. He, he has reversed that in many of us. And we are his witnesses today. Amen. So. Here's the thing also that I want you to know and understand about this passage. When she touched the hem of his garment, it would make sense that the word would say healing came out of, of him. That's not what the word says. It would make sense that the word would say love came out of him. That's not what the word says. The word says that when she touched the hem of the, his garment, Jesus said, power went out of him. Power went out of him. Listen, ladies, it is God's will for us that we receive his power to heal and to be delivered to be free from those foundational issues that the enemy wanted to bring in our lives through the generations, maybe through things that we should not have done. It could have come all kinds of ways, but that doesn't matter. 
He wants us to have power. Power to do what? Well, I'm going to show you in this passage in just a minute. So when, she, when power came out, in verse 46, Jesus said, someone touch me, for I perceive that power has gone out from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him and declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. You know what? We like to hide. Remember we talked about wounds? You can't get healed unless you expose the wound. If the woman with the spider bite had come into the hospital and not exposed her wound, we could not have helped her. So this woman, I'm sure, was used to hiding. She, and back in that day, with all of that bleeding, she was considered unclean. She was not supposed to be out. She was probably anemic and very weak. She probably didn't look good. And she probably didn't smell good either. She was not supposed to be out. She was supposed to be hidden in the minds of, in our carnal minds, in our humanity. But God, you know that Jesus knew that she was coming. And so the word says when she realized she couldn't hide anymore, she told the people what happened to her which is why Bishop and this other young lady who spoke just before me could tell the testimony because the enemy tried to steal the vision for the testimony that would pro propel you into your destiny so that you could be used of God to set people free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive these words of the Lord, ladies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It gets better. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. After this woman, at the beginning of the passage, the foundation of her life, 12 years bleeding, dirty, stinking, crawling, that was the foundation of her life. But I want you to see something in verse 48. Verse 48 says, and Jesus is speaking. After she had given her testimony to the people, she wasn't hiding anymore. She was standing upright. She wasn't crawling anymore. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Let me tell you something. There is woman. There is Sarah. There's the Proverbs 31 woman. There's the woman at the well. But this woman, this woman, the one who had the foundational issue of blood was the only one Jesus called daughter. Do you hear me, ladies? Do you hear me? The foundation of your life may be raggedy. The foundation of your life may be full of blood. The foundation of your life may be full of rejection Hallelujah. and abandonment and fear. But he, you are the one. He yes. calls daughter. Oh, Receive God. that word today, daughters. Receive mm. that word today. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The one yes, Lord. that was thrown away. You Hallelujah. Are you are the one he's huh? speaking to today. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Don't you for one second doubt him anymore. Don't you for one second doubt that he wants to do in and through you what he's done for this woman. Thank Don't you doubt what he's done for many of us on this platform. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let Thank brother you, Lord. Set you free today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to show you one more thing, and I'm closing. And I know it's going to look backwards probably when I put it up. But I want to share this with you. For those of you who are, you're in your churches, you're in your communities, and 
many times, and I'm I'm in my church and I'm in my community in, in Tennessee in the United States, and I'm talking to my pastor, praying with my pastor, pleading with my pastor. We have to meet the people at the level of their hurt, which is what we're doing now. We can't gloss over it anymore and have three worship songs and a prayer and a and a and a sermon. All of that is wonderful, but we've got to meet people where they are. So here's the illustration that the Lord gave me, and I'm just going to take a few minutes, and I'm using pornography because it's something that everybody understands, and I think that it makes it clear. So if you have a house, can you all see that? Yeah, if but I think it's it, all right. Yeah, it, right here. Yeah, better. better okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. Let's say that pornography is the stronghold. Lots of men deal with pornography. Okay. Let's say this is the roof of the house. Okay. Can you live in a house that has a roof off? Yes. Because you know what? The people can put tarp over the house. And you can still function in the walls, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have people who have dealt with pornography and the people just say, oh, My, you are muted. Pastor Angie, you need to unmute yourself, please. You just muted there. Uh, yeah, Pastor Angie Wynn, just unmute yourself, please. Hello, Hello Jackson. Pastor Angie, you're yes. muted. Yes. You're muted. If you can just uh, unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Yes, you're sir. back. You're back. Can you hear me? You're back. Thank you. Yeah, okay. you have muted. It's okay now. Thank you. Okay. Pastor, can you start all over again? Yes, I can. So if you have the stronghold of pornography, if a man or even a woman has a stronghold of pornography in your life, what the church has said, stop that pornography. Stop that. You know that the Lord does not appreciate that. So you take the roof off of the house, but you can function in a house with tarp as the roof and you would still have the walls. The walls that hold up the stronghold of pornography could be fear, generational curses, pride. That's just a few. But beneath all of that are the lies that are believed about pornography. A generational curse would say, oh, everybody does it. Everybody does it. That's just a man thing. You know, that's a lie. And underneath that is the trauma, maybe sexual abuse or fondling or that type of thing that led to this structure and holds up the stronghold of pornography. So as the body of believers, as women who know about healing and deliverance and freedom, we have to start here, which is what we're doing today to tear down the foundation of the structure and stronghold, dispel the lies of the enemy, tear down the walls that hold up the stronghold and get into the lives of people truly to help them to get free. Does that make sense, ladies? Yes, yes, yes. 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 So, as we have done today, dealing with the trauma through clinicians, through pastoral counseling, through testimony, through understanding the love of God for us. Let me tell you, when I'm in counseling, it never fails. When people are in dire need of help, there's two things that people don't know. Number one, they don't know how much God loves them. They have no clue because we assign to God 
the characteristics of our most influential person who raised us in our formative years. So if you had a loving mother and father, it's very easy to assign to God the characteristics of a loving father. But if you had a mean, you know, honorary kind of parent, it's very difficult to not see God as that type of parent. So we have to get people to know and understand the love of God. That is through his word and that is through prayer and that's inviting Holy Spirit in their lives to, to work in their hearts. And so they don't know the love of God and they don't know the character of God. They think that God is a, a harsh uh, taskmaster. They think that he is just ready to pounce on them and punish them so many times, but that is not true. The Bible says it's his loving kindness that leads us to repentance. And so when you are ministering to people, I admonish you to lay down the foundation of his love for them. Give them scriptures that talk about his love. Psalm 103 is a beautiful passage about his love and his compassion for, for all of us. So help them to know the, the compassion and the love of God and the character of God, that he is for us. He is not against us. He wants us to have power to overcome those foundational issues in our lives, in our formative years. Yes, Pamela. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So ladies, he loves us. He adores you. All of you are his favorite. And he wants you to be healed, delivered, and set free by the blood of Jesus and the word of your testimony. And I'm just so thankful to have been a part of this platform. I'm so thankful that you know, there's a word in my belly and there's living water and that you have come to drink and we have drank of the, the, the beautiful water of each other in this time and in this uh, season. So thank you so much again for the invitation and I pray that he will bless you exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think now and forever in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank wow. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, wow, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you yes. so much, woman of God. Wow. Hallelujah. We are blessed. I hope we can see how the Lord is dealing with this foundational problem. You know, yes. the enemy calls you a name. Hallelujah. He brings Hallelujah. a situation that he wants yes. to use to define you. But that was just something that is about him. But God has come. And when he comes, he gives us power. Hallelujah. Yes. Her, her, her teaching take us back to our bishop testimony. The yes. enemy wrecked, but when God came, he gave her power and she became a weapon now going to nations, delivering yes. those that are in bondage. I don't know where you are. I don't know that thing that has happened to you. I don't know how the enemy has bind you and said, shut up. I remember uh, one day I was meant to teach Sunday school. I was having so much challenges with my family and there was so much going on. And I, I, I all night, I was just like, Lord, what's all this about? And I hear that voice clear, hide yourself. What do you have to say? Hide. Look at your son. Look at your life. Look at your marriage. Look at this. Go and hide. Do you even have, what do you have to say? Who are you to preach to others? Hide yourself. It was so clear. The voice was so clear. And I knew that was not the voice of the Lord. He does not condemn. You understand? But immediately I received a phone call from another woman of God. He said, ah, 
He said, this one, what is wrong with you? I have not slept all night. The Lord does not allow me to sleep. He has been raising me up all night to pray for you. What's going on, my dear? I have been praying over you all night. Every time I want to sleep, I can't sleep. He just wake me up and I start to pray. Everything. Are you okay? You know what? I couldn't understand. I couldn't answer her. I just fell on the floor and I just begin to praise God. I just begin to honor God because the enemy was lying to me that because of my situation, I was not qualified. But the Lord was saying to me that he is my qualifier. Hallelujah. The Lord is your qualifier. I don't know what that trauma is, but he is the one that has said that you are his daughter. I love that. He said, when the, she was known as the woman with the issue of blood, but the Lord calls her daughter. Daughter, yes. made you heal. Hallelujah. Oh, that's woman that is feeling so down, so worthless. Rise. We have a song in the Zillia's woman. I am wonderful, inmates. I am beautiful, inmates. I am the finishing touch of the creation. I am wonderful, inmates. I am the finishing touch of creation. I am beautiful, man. Until he made me, he did not he did stop. stop. Until he made me, he did not rest. rest. When he when made me, he looked at me and said, How beautiful you are. How wonderful and marvelous is my, is my creation, creation with you. I am wonderful, wonderful in You are I beautiful, beautiful in You are the great daughter of Zion. Zion. The apple of his eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. We are the finishing touch of the work of God. We are the icing of, 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 his, of his creation. We are the one that... When he has done all things, he said, all is good. But he said, what? Mm, but there is something still missing around here. And he sees the man. He said, it is not good that you are, you know, he said, well, it's not right, but it's not good, you know? And then he brought us into the scene and said, hey, now, yeah, this is good. This is perfect. You know, and that is who you are. And that is why the enemy fights so much because you carry greatness within you. Hallelujah. You have that womb that bears greatness, that bears the, the, the goodness of God, that bears the one that crushes the enemy's head. Even though he sometimes, he most, most of the time, he come trying to, 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 to hit our feet, trying to make us to stumble. But why God, when you receive that power from the God, from the Lord your God, and you crush his head, and you say, no, right now, I'm betting the one that crushes your head. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited in my spirit. I'm so excited in my spirit. Before our mama will come and release the healing anointing, because this is so much, Pastor Angie, thank you so much. I want to appreciate all our speakers from our wonderful uh, woman of God. She's our co-host. She, since she came into our midst, it has been something else. It was the Lord's divine orchestration, uh, Bishop Hannah, and then they come, our wonderful Maran, the psychologist. Wow, she break it down. Nitty gritty yesterday, it was powerful. And then came our wonderful professor, Prof K. She, is, she, just, she just make it obvious. And then you know when you're feeling that headache, you know that now I need to check on myself right now. I'm not going to allow the enemy to take advantage of me. And then we hear our wonderful Pastor Paul. You know, life, one thing I have said, life experiences always, always teach us things that will, it makes us relate that, oh my God, and it exposes the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. And here we are. We have just been taught that those things are really those ways the enemy wants to take away our worth, 
who we are, who we really are in God. He calls you daughter. He calls me daughter. But the enemy wants us to be named, to be labeled by our condition, by our situation. So I just want to bless the Lord for all our speakers to, uh, today. It has been awesome. I know every one of us has been blessed. And I want to thank everyone that has been, that is there from Facebook and other platforms. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you all. Hallelujah. So bear with us. We know that we are taking more time. It was yesterday, but we are going to the end now. And this is just also the beginning because we have so much to go on and that we'll be giving, sending out the information. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before I introduce our big mommy that will be releasing healing uh, anointing tonight. No, we are, now we are prepared. We are open. Hallelujah. The one of God left us with um, with a, a scripture, and that scripture, I want every one of us to take it, but I just want to give us a few persons, because it reminds you of who your father is, that he has you right in his heart at all times. Psalm 103, hallelujah. It helps you to be, be in that praise mode at all times, knowing no matter the trick of the enemy, he has you. He, is, he has your back. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, my soul, my soul. All that is within me, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. When the enemy come and say, you, look at all the life you have lived. You are not worthy. The, here, he's reminding my soul. Come on, rise and praise the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. He said, who redeems my life from the pit and crowns me with love and compassion. Hallelujah. With love and compassion. When you feel loveless, when you feel rejected by the world, remember the love of God is not negotiable. You don't have to buy it. His compassion fails not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He satisfied my desire. He satisfied my mouth with good things. And so he renewed my youth like that of ego. Praise the Lord. We are not like what we have been through. Many of us, we have stories to tell. We know the enemy has taken us through very difficult situation, trauma. But when the glory of God come on us, when we meet with him, he releases his power on us. Our youth is renewed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Okay. Just want us, I want you to thank God for what he has done in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. We worship and adore you. You have been so awesome to us. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We magnify you for who you are. Thank you for speaking my, uh, powerfully through all our speakers. We are not ignorant to Lord, my Heavenly Father. We are receiving all this with fullness of heart. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Angie. After Apostle, nobody should leave. After Apostle, because we have another ministration, we will just uh, connect. Remember to share your, uh, your email because we have a free ebook from our bishop to be sending out. It's totally free. You don't have to pay for it. Just by coming to this conference, you have a chance to have that um, ebook. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, Mommy Apostle. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We bless God for your life. Sorry, uh, it has been so intense. <laughs> So we are we are we run outside. Well, whatever you can do for us, I know within the time the Lord that you have, the Lord will make it possible. We'll receive our healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We have uh, a great uh, vessel of God in our midst. She is a woman that I admire so much. 
Also, again, I met her through Facebook. I will continue to emphasize this, that when you are on any media you are, social media is not something we should shy away from. Because if you use it rightfully, it will benefit you. And it will make you to connect to the right people. The enemy is using uh, those social media to destroy the next generation. So I, I implore you, go and learn to use it to build the next generation, to connect, network. Hallelujah. I met her on Facebook. I saw what she's doing and I loved what she's doing. So I followed her and I followed her and I end up going to her um, to her website, I just love the work she does. Hallelujah. She's, uh, she's a wonderful woman of God. Her name is Apostle Dr. Elishama Ile. She's a called evangelist, but she operates with an apostolic prophetic grace with a distinct voice unto the nations. She's the president of founder of Christ the Ever Present Ministry, Lagos, a faith-based organization that provides succor and hope for the hurting, the lowly, widows and downtrodden, orphans, and all categories of the less privileged and the marginalized. She mentors young girls and women into more purpose-driven existence and also raises leaders to be change agents in our communities and the nation. Through her work as an evangelist and witnessing firsthand the plight and suffering of the masses, her passion grew to see reformation in her land, Nigeria. She became a voice to the voiceless, and through his body, she founded Partnership for a New Nigeria, a new Nigeria, a social advocacy group committed to awakening the consciousness of all Nigerians towards engendering the birth of a new Nigeria and the realization of God's agenda for Nigeria. She's 57 years plus old, a mother of three biological children, and to thousands tied to her lawyers, minister, author, philanthropist, entrepreneur, media personality, political activist, and a social crusader. She's the head of a group of ministry, mentoring women, raising leaders all under the umbrella of Elishama Ide Ministries International. She's a recipient of many awards, both locally and internationally because of her laudable works. Evangelist Apostle Elishama Ide holds a BA in Mass Communication from Bowie State College, Maryland, USA. And because of her passion to see reformation in her land, she was an aspirant for the governor of the president, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the run up of 2019 election. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, Ma. Thank you for your humility. I know you are very busy. I know you have so much, but I just said, let me reach out. And you said, yes, I pray that the Lord will continually honor you. He will continually expand your territory, amplify your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you for honoring us. And um, we know that Whatever the Lord gives to you within the time is going to be uh, to our uh, benefits. It's been so awesome. The Lord has, since yesterday, he has been mighty in our midst. And for him to instruct us to bring you into our midst as well, we know that he's set for healing and deliverance. Thank you so much, man. God bless you. Thank you so much, Adeswa. Thank you. I am so, I feel so highly honored and excited to be in the midst of great women. Can I pin myself on this? Can I? I don't know. Is it allowed? Uh, okay. Yes, go ahead. Well, it's not allowing me, so you might have to do it as my host. Um, okay, let me uh, make you a co host then. Yes, I've pinned you. Pinned you now. Thank okay. you. You have been pinned, ma'am. Okay, I've been pinned. Okay, I'm not saying it here, so it's kind of distracting me a little bit. Okay, anyway, greetings to everyone. Greetings to the great women on this platform. And um, 
It's a great honor. I feel so highly privileged anytime I am called on to be a blessing to God's people. I do not take it for granted in any way. So um, thank you, Adeswa. Thank you for the great work you are doing with uh, SS OSCs. And thank you for inviting me. And um, I just want to bless God for the life of all of the women speakers that have gone ahead of me before this time. God bless you all for being a blessing to everybody globally. Um, I can see Deborah's global outreach, Zelia's woman ministries, Mrs. Chaid, and so many others. Sorry if I can't see you on here and I'm not calling your name, I acknowledge you. Thank you so very much. Sorry, I've not been able to come in um, since you started yesterday. Um, like you said, I, I had the, my, my schedule is a little bit tight, but uh, I'm here now, so I give all glory to God. So um, it has, the topic has been issues in the tissues. But before we start, can we just bow our heads and acknowledge the presence of the King of Kings again, the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the creator of heaven and earth, our Lord and our God, King Jesus, our high priest, we bless you at this hour in you, we live in you, we move in you, we have the totality of our being. We are not in outside of you. Thank you for that which you are using us to do worldwide, that which you are using women to do at this set time on earth. Thank you for finding us and counting us among the lots that you found worthy for your assignment. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we bless you forevermore. Holy Ghost, we ask you to please take over this platform. Have your way at this time. Do that which only you can do. Help me to minister with uh, power and with function. Let not my words be near words. Let them come out with fire and with power. Power to heal, power to save, power to deliver. Oh Lord God, power to encourage and um, bring hope into the lives of everyone that has the opportunity to listen to me today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless the God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, so I, I'm Amen. sure everybody has just been wonderful. I'm going to take my time to watch later every, uh, every speaker session. But the matter has been issue in the tissues. Um, and I'm supposed to be taking the session for healing and all of that. But before I go fully into that, I will still say one or two things in the areas of the issues that will cause us to be in the, in the tissue. We, as far as we are on this, uh, the Bible says uh, in the book of John 16, 33, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace, but in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Take heart, I have overcome the world. As far as we're in this world, our King Jesus has already promised us or has already allotted us and, uh, you know, uh, made us to be aware that we are already on a broken realm. We are on a broken world. And because we are in this realm, we will always have contentions. We will always have issues. As we go through life, we have challenges. And these challenges oftentimes in life will make us go to our tissues and cry our eyes out, you know? You know, just go before the master, have our tissues in the hand, have our handkerchief, and we will always have a reason to cry. I don't think there's one human being on earth right now that no matter what, no matter how highly placed, no matter, no matter where you are in life, there will always be a reason to go to the tissue once in a while. But he said, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That is the victory that we already have as believers. Once you are a child of God, 
once you accept the name of Jesus as your Lord, Savior, and Redeemer, there is one thing that is assured, no matter what brings us to the tissue, no matter the issues that brings us to the tissues in life on this earth. He said, he has already overcome those situations for us. Mm -hmm. So that is the power that we have to use against every issues in the tissue. Mm -hmm. The power of overcoming, that is the power that our King Jesus has given to us. He said, we are overcomers. So he's saying in essence that whatsoever brings you to a place in your life that makes you bow down and have the tissues in your eyes, you know, to wipe your eyes while you are crying. He said, there is already an overcoming power to overcome those things. Mm -hmm. So as far as you are still breathing, as far as you are still here on earth, there is no situation that is too overwhelming or is too much for our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer to help us overcome. He said he has already overcome that issue. So I do not know what your issues are. I do not know where you are presently having reasons from time to time to have to go into your tissues because of your issues. I have to cry or just have to go into your closet before the Lord and just, you know, cry and ask the Lord, how am I going to overcome this? I have a word for you. You are already overcomers. And overcomer. Because he also says in his book, in the first, first Corinthians 15, 57, he says, but thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, thanks be to God who gives us victory. He always gives us victory. He always gives us victory. Amen. So I do not know what your issues are. I have come to declare and to proclaim this afternoon. Most of the things I'll be saying here as I take the scriptures are actually declarations and decrees. So I am decreeing and declaring that whatsoever issue is in your tissues, that you have victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will give you victory over that situation in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, we, we look at situations in life. What are the sort of situations that usually brings us to the tissue that makes us to just cry from time to time. There are a lot of situations that can make one, you know, come before God and just um, um, go to the tissue and, and just be bowling your eyes out and just think, oh my God, I don't know how to do this or it's over. I, I don't know if I will survive this. I don't know who's going to help me out of this situation. And I'm going to just touch on in one of two of those, in a couple of those areas. Then I will just make a decree, I make a proclamation, and uh, that God gives you, God gives us, God gives anyone that is under the sound of my voice at this hour victory over such situations in Jesus' name. Amen. Oftentimes, oftentimes, one of the greatest um, issues that takes Mankind to the tissues. One of the top lists are financial crisis. Ooh, financial crisis. I will, I will even zero it down to two major things before I go into other areas. Health crisis, health, and financial crisis. Because if you are not in good health, no matter where you are in life, um, you will always go to the tissue to, to cry. Especially when you have come to a place in your life and do you spend all you need to spend? So health and finances go hand in hand when it comes to going to the tissue concerning those issues. Because once you have a good health, then you have hope for every other areas of your life. But once health is affected, then it affects a whole lot of other issues of one's life. 
Like um, I will take an example of the woman uh, with the issue of blood. We all know that the account of that woman in the scripture and um, the Bible tells us about an issue that she has been bleeding in a private area for 12 years of her life. So privates can, you know, be dissected into different areas of our life. A lot of people are bleeding in different private areas that they cannot expose to people because the sort of issue she was having is not an even in, in that area of her life, which is very intimate, which is very private. It's not something she could expose to everybody. So a lot of people are in situations in life where they have issues that just keep them going to the tissue. And this woman, oh my God, apart from the tissues that make her cry, begin to imagine the sort of all sort of tissues she must have used in 12 years to try to package that flow of blood. That flow of blood. She practically lost everything concerning her finances. The Bible tells us that she has suffered many things from many physicians. All sorts of doctors she has gone to trying to receive healing. They have collected her money. Not only was she losing life gradually, because the Bible says the life of a man is in the blood. Uh, yeah, the life of a man is in the blood. She was leaking in a private area. Life was coming out of her gradually, gradually. Then she was losing again her finances. She had gone to all sorts of physicians that collected everything and she, she could you know, she, has, she had in terms of money and they could not help her. She was not only losing money, she was also losing her family. Because if you read the account of that woman and you understand the, uh, the, tradition, the traditions of the Jews, any woman that is bleeding, you know, which is the, uh, the natural format of a woman for a certain period every month, even those few days in the natural flow, not uh, to talk of the sort of the, the type of issues she was facing in the natural, a woman's flow is supposed to take like three days or five days. At max, for some women, maybe seven or eight days, but that is in a rare condition. But even at that, they are kept away. She will not be able to um, relate to her husband at such seasons. She will not be able to cook for her household. That is their culture. She will not be able to enter the synagogue to go and pray. Oh my God. So you can begin to imagine a woman was going through that sort of flow for 12 years. So the enemy practically shot her down, shot her life down. She was, she became an outcast to even her own family. Her husband could not come here because she was not supposed to go. To, to, to have anything to do with her husband at that season. She was not supposed to cook for her household at that season. She could not cook for her family. Then the only place where she could have respite, where she could at least want to, to go and get encouragement, to have hope of healing, which was the church, which was, you know, the, the, the church community, where she's supposed to at least have a priest pray over her, she could not enter. So the enemy had put her in a place where she was practically shut down. She was like a living dead, alive. She was just moving, but she was already dead because everything that could be a source of joy and encouragement to her, she was cut off from it. But today, because she met a savior, Hallelujah. She heard about Jesus. Hallelujah. The only one that could deliver. Hallelujah. The only one that could set her free. Amen. The only one that could restore Thank her. Thank you, Jesus. The only one that could save her. Amen. She heard about him. Oh, my young gala, gala, gala. And I hope rose again. Amen. So I know somebody is going to sound my voice at this hour. Thank you, Jesus. I do not know how Thank the enemy Jesus. has shut you up or shut you down. Thank you, Jesus. I do Thank not know Jesus. how the enemy has shut you in, cut you off from your family, cut you off from your finances, 
cut you off, or cut you off from the community that could encourage you, cut you off from life itself. The Bible said that woman heard about Jesus hey, and she went Jesus. and joined the crowd. She had an issue. So we are discussing Jesus. about issues in the kingdom. Listen, finances was, finances was involved here. Health was involved here. Life was involved here. Family was involved here. Community of friends and even the spiritual aspect of our life was involved here. So in essence, everything about our life, about our existence on earth was attacked. But she had an encounter with Jesus Christ. The Bible says she came in the press. Even when everybody was pressing and Jesus was there ministering to people, they were trying to push her away. And she said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. Oh, yes, oh, 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 Her face rose. She knew the only one that could save her was Jesus Christ. Mm. So if you are out there and you are saying my life is going, my finances are drained. I don't even have anything to sustain myself. I have been caught up with my for my family. My children resent me. They reproach me. They reproach me. I have issues that are so overwhelming. My husband has gone away from me. My community cannot come near me. I cannot even go near the church. Because I am a reproach and an outcast and a ridicule. I've got another coming word for you tonight. Amen. Or this afternoon or this morning or this evening from whatever location you are watching us from. If only you can engage your faith at this hour. I do not care how, how big or how grave those issues are. <laughs> Scripture tells us, it said, he said, we, he, Jesus has already overcome the world for us. It's our overcoming power. Today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, if you can engage your hearts like this woman with the issue of blood did, whatever those private areas of your life that you cannot even relate to friends. No. She could not relate to friends. You cannot even relate to family. She was cut off from her family. Even those that, the only hope that she had to give her encouragement, she was caught up. That you do not even have money to even be able to treat yourself or take care of yourself, whatever the situation is, it might not even be helped. But I'm saying in any private area of your life, whatever your issues are, that is only God you can relate to. If you can open your heart at this hour, and engage in faith right now, the same way that woman engaged and said in her heart, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. And she moved and she pushed. So I, be, I, I want you to begin to move in the spirit right now, engage your heart, even as this word is coming forth. Wherever you are, I'm asking you to engage because there's going to be a shift now in the name of Jesus. Your life will not remain the same again after this time out. The Bible says she moved. And she pushed through. Even if your faith is going down, I want you to rise up right now in the name of Jesus. I am commanding your faith to rise up right now in the name of Jesus, no matter what those issues are. Begin to engage in the spirit right now. Begin to visualize yourself touching the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ, the only one that can heal you. He is our healer. He's our healer. Nobody else can heal us. The Bible says, and she touched, she touched the hem of his garment. And scripture records that immediately, 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 the fountain of our blood that was draining dried up. She dried up immediately, not after. Immediately. Because even Christ felt it, that version left him. 
that virtue left him. Why would he feel that virtue left him, especially for one woman, when there were a lot of people pushing him, touching him, because that woman engaged in an unusual way. Today, as you are listening to me, engage right now. And, I'm, and I am issuing this decree right now. I'm issuing this declaration. Whatever the fountain of your problems are that has been leaking in your private areas that you cannot even tell anybody, only you and God Almighty knows it. Today, as you engage on this platform, after the order of that woman, with the issue of blood, I am asking that the fountains of your problem dries up right now. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. that it dries up now, this very minute, this very minute. In the name of Jesus, no matter what crisis it is, no matter what issues it is, I am asking for an activation by the blood of Jesus, the shed blood of the eternal covenant. The blood that conquers Satan, the blood that spoil principalities, the blood that spoil powers, the blood that made an open show of the enemy, the blood that was shed for our redemption and rededication back unto God, our reconciliation, the blood of Jesus, the blood of mercy that is speaking better things on our behalf right now. I use that blood by the anointing of the Holy Ghost for an activation of your healing and your deliverance in any area that your life is leaking away. And I ask that you are able to touch God today and that your healing is instant in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I ask that your deliverance is instant. Wherever you might have been afflicted, Wherever the enemy might have come against your life, taking life from you gradually, mm -hmm. discouraging you. That woman with the issue of blood was so discouraged. She was so discouraged. Just begin to imagine the scenario that I've just, you know, um, outlined. Cut off from husband, cut off from children, cut off from community, cut off from the church, the only place where she could even go and have spiritual covering and encouragement. Cut off because of her issue. So I don't know what issue is cutting you off out of the generality of life that you are supposed to have. Today, by the mercies of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the blood that was shed for us on the cross, for us to he receive our healing at every level, I ask that the end of that problem is now. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I ask that the fountain of those issues dry up. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Hallelujah. And then, you know, your issues, apart from it be, being medical, like that woman, or like I have already also declared in other areas, sometimes we might be in financial crisis. And it might not just be because of sickness or because of things like that. It might just be sometimes because one does not know how to. Um, be prudent, be prudent. So today, I'm going to ask for such people that the Spirit of God will give you wisdom. Wisdom to overcome your financial crisis and manage your finances in Jesus' name. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct because sometimes the deliverance we need in some areas of our lives is just wisdom. Wisdom that God gives us to handle all issues of life. Because after God even healing us or delivering us from some situations, if you do not have wisdom of management in certain areas of your life, it is possible or it is easy to fall back again to those same problems. No matter how much healing or deliverance you receive. Because God is always ready to heal us. Is always ready to deliver us. But the foundation that you create for yourself, for that deliverance to be permanent, is actually your own choice. It's your own choice. You can come before the presence of the Lord now, and God heals you instantly. And God delivers you instantly. But for that deliverance to be permanent, the choice is yours. That is why anytime Jesus heals, he will tell whoever he has just healed, 
Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. In essence, Christ is saying anything that happens to us, that puts us into any form of bondage, if you look at it critically, is roots are in sin. And when you are talking of sin, a lot of people, when you talk of sin, they might just think, they always look at the, what they think is the bigger picture. But scripture tells me, if you fall short in one, you fall short in all. There's no big sin, there's no small sin. So if you do not know, if you do not know how to uh, be prudent, how to be wise, how to obey the totality of God's word, by asking the Holy Ghost to help you daily, it is easy for you to lose your healing and deliverance. I'm not saying salvation. Salvation is permanent. I'm talking about different issues that will make life peaceable, easy for you to be able to manage and navigate through this earth. So that one that will be permanent is actually your own choice. And I pray that as you listen to me today, the Spirit of God will give you wisdom in managing the areas of your life that you are weak on in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I've, I've dealt with health crisis. I've dealt with financial uh, issues. Then you can also say relationships, marriages, and family. So you find that also in the issue of the woman with the issue of blood. Everything is interrelated concerning that woman's story. But right now, I'm just going to pray for anyone that have issues in their relationships, in their marriage, in their family. Families, relationships, and marriages come with a lot of challenges and issues of life. They come with a, with a lot of issues of life. And sometimes we are prone to be, you know, confused when we encounter such issues, either in marriages, in areas that marriages are suffering, or areas that if anyone is having issues concerning managing their children, either children are rebellious or sick or going to one form of affliction or the other, or they, they, they are into drugs or the spirit of the age has caught up with them today. I'm standing in the gap and in agreement with as many women that are on this platform. Any such issues in your life, in your marriage, in your family, I ask God to touch you right now, touch your marriage for healing in the name of Jesus, that everything that has brought issues in your marriage, that is stealing the joy, the peace, the bliss that marriage is all about, that you receive healing. And that the hand of God steps in today and roots out every seed that the enemy has brought into your home, into your marriage, to bring about a quick turnaround for healing and deliverance in Jesus' name, so that you can be able to live peaceably and blissful and have a blissful and enjoyable marriage with your spouse in the name of Jesus. And if there's anybody right here that you are suffering, in the area of having issues with your children. Thank you, Pam. Oh, Pamela. <laughs> I can see Pamela. Pamela, I have one of my dear uh, niece. She's here all the way from UK. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you, my darling. So um, if you have issues in all of those areas, God will help you. If you have issues with managing your children and their issues, either medical or either spiritual. We can see the issue of that woman, that um, woman that had a demon-possessed child that had to go to Jesus, even when Jesus was not ready to minister to Gentiles. The issue of that woman is very, very interesting. And I want to give you a really, um, some kind of re revelation concerning our situation. That was a woman that had a demon-possessed daughter. And she had an encounter with Jesus Christ. I want you all to understand that there's nothing that happens with us in God that was not already pre-ordinated, pre predestinated, and already preordained by God. Either good or bad, God knows about it. God did not bring the evil upon you, but he will use, he will 
Use the situation of your life to orchestrate his glory. Amen. Are you listening to me? Did somebody get that? Yes. God sir. will use the situation of your life as far as you come to him, as far as you come to him, he will use it to orchestrate his glory. Amen. That, that, that woman, that demon possessed, woman with the demon possessed daughter, at some the time she came to Jesus, Jesus was not ready to minister to the Gentiles. He was not ready. He was all, he said, I have not been sent to people like you. I've only been sent to the lost sheep in the house of the house of Israel. So another revelation I want you to encourage the woman with concerning that is that for what everybody has believed that is either Peter, Apostle Peter or Paul that brought, um, that was able to bring um, salvation to the Gentiles. It was that woman. It was a woman that backed it. She was Hallelujah. the one that backed it. Hallelujah. With everything that started, it started first with the woman. The ministry of Jesus, every level of it was orchestrated by the resilience of a woman. Hallelujah. A woman at every point, the woman at the, at the well in Samaria, the demon, uh, the woman with the demon possessed child, the Mary Magdalene, the different level of the ministry of Jesus was battered by a woman. You know, that woman came to Jesus. Jesus was not ready. He said it clearly, even though he knew he was eventually going to take the gospel to the, to the, to, to, to the Gentiles. But he needed a woman to bat that. So anything that would batted here on earth, a woman must bat it first. Hallelujah. That is the only way it can, it can be rooted here on earth. Because there's a spirituality about the womb of a woman, not just only in the physical. So that is why anytime God wants to bat something new on earth, he must look for a woman that has the spirit of resilience, the spirit of resilience to be able to bat it. Hallelujah. Is somebody listening to me? So Hallelujah. that woman was the one that carried the gospel of salvation to the Gentiles. She was able to be resilient enough to pull Jesus to give her healing for her daughter, even when Jesus was not ready. But she did it with the spirit of humility. Is somebody listening to me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. A time will come in our life, depending on what your situation is, you have to go before God in you. Yes. You have to bow at his feet. Yes. You have to be humble. You know, your petition. Look, everybody yes. carries different levels of problem. Mm. My problem is different from your problem. Your problem is different from my problem. Our working life is different. And if you want to get healing and deliverance, be ready to humble yourself according to your issue. <laughs> Somebody is not hearing me. Hallelujah. Be, be ready to humble yourself according to your issue. Yes, Lord. That woman, she came to Jesus. Jesus had an encounter with her and told her, I am not sent to people like you. That, that, that can all, all, you know, already offend somebody's humanity. How can you say you are not sent to, to, to somebody like me? You are supposed to be the savior. Then when she, they were still having this conversation, he now said, I cannot give the children's bed to the dogs. He even called her a dog. Oh, my shangala. Do you know what Christ was trying to do there? He was using the characteristic of human being when we're in some situation, how humans will treat you. How one will say, you, what makes you think I can have? Mm. You are, you are, you, 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 you. What I have, I cannot give it to dogs like you. There are some situations in life you'll be faced and people will call you a dog. And God will be telling you, you see that person that is calling you a dog, your miracle and your deliverance is in the hand of that person. Mm. And if you do not humble yourself, you might not be able to receive it. Jesus, Jesus, wow. wow. You might not be able to receive it. Oftentimes people will wow. think, why would God, would God send me to somebody or send somebody to me that will humiliate me? He's God. He does what he wants to do. Can you question him? You cannot question him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so he any time you see Jesus do, 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 do something, there's a symbolic revelation to everything that he's doing because he's God Almighty. So that action was symbolic and representing the human character. But because that woman desperately needs deliverance for her daughter, <laughs> she overlooked 
all of that insult and said, even dogs eat from the crumbs that comes from the master's table. Thank you, Father. That was our deliverance. Mm. Oftentimes, God would place us in a situation where we really need to humble ourselves to receive our healing, to receive our deliverance. He will bring us to our feet. Because you see, God, one, one thing about, about the kingdom that we belong to, the kingdom of, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, is one of the greatest hallmark of that, that um, represents us or that marks us out. Is humility. And people, people misunderstand what humility is in the kingdom. Humility does not mean you are a weak person. Humility does not mean you are a stupid person. Jesus Christ was humble, but he was not, he was not a pushover. You can't push him over. As a human, that's why the Bible said, we have a high priest who has not been touched. That we, we cannot say we don't have a happiness that has not been touched, that has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So there's nothing that will tempt you in life. Whatever you go through, Christ has already experienced it. The only thing, the way he handled this is that the Bible said he did not sin in receiving his victory in all of those temptations. No matter what you are going through as a human being right now, God put Christ to it, believe me. That is why the Bible even tells us that Jesus Christ lent obedience by the things which he suffered. <laughs> Christ was 100% man and 100% God. So God placed him on this earth so that no matter what you say you are going through, he allowed Christ to go through it to show us an example of the overcoming spirit we have as believers. Remember the scripture I started with that I said, he said, be of good cheer, for I have already overcome the world in the book of John 16, 33. Then in John, in the book of 1 John 5, 4, he said, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Everyone born of God. There's something God tells me. He said, when you key into me, he tells me that all the time. And I have seen it in all aspects of my life. This woman sitting here, if you know my story, you wonder why I come out shining every day. If I tell you some battles I overcome every day, and you say, ah, and, you are still, and you are still looking like this. Ah, yes, because I believe every word of God. I'm, dis I'm being distracted by this uh, uh, um, people pinning up on the major screen. I am not even pinned up. Or people are coming up, so it's distracting my focus. So um, I need to put my toes in place right now because somebody just came on like that. Anyway, so we have an overcoming spirit. We have an overcoming spirit. Anyone, he said, for everyone born of God, if you are born of God, you are born again, you are born of Jesus. He said, you overcome. There is no situation that is too big. There is no situation that is too that is too much that you cannot overcome. He said, "This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith." Hallelujah! So everything is engaged in our faith. So as you engage your faith, even with this ministration, this afternoon, I decree and I declare that no matter your situation, you are an overcomer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That you will overcome every Amen. issue of life. He said, every issue you have that's, that's, that will overcome the world. That means every issue. You overcome every issue of life. So you overcome. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it goes further if I have to look at the book of Hebrews 12. One. He said, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles 
and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Amen. You know, I, I was trying to make a point earlier about that woman with the issue of blood and about how every time that Jesus heals, he will say, go and say no more. I, will, I, cannot, I cannot emphasize that enough, that everything about our healing and deliverance is still, is still established upon our choices thereafter. It's still established. That's why I said, if you go back to your vomit again, what will happen will be seven times worse than what you were dealing with before. So usually as a deliverance, because I'm also a deliverance minister, I'm always telling people, before you deliver people, let them be grounded in the word of the Lord. Let them be grounded. God is always ready to, to, to heal and deliver. Healing can come upon you immediately right now once the word of God is released. But it is, it is very important that you understand the basis and the basic foundation of why you have come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is to separate your life from sin and Satan, first and foremost. That is the only way your deliverance can be full and absolute. A lot of people have, have lost their healing, they've lost their deliverance by being going to be entangled again in sin. And they'll say, ah, I received my healing yesterday. Ah, that pastor does not know. Something's wrong with that pastor. That pastor is not a man of God. That woman is not a man of God. Does the pastor come to stay with you 24 7? Everything about our life is our choices. It has nothing to do with the pastor. The pastor's assignment is to minister in the place that the grace of God has given over your life. The choices that you take with you thereafter belongs to you according to the word of God. So you, you need to fight the good fight of faith every day to make, to secure your healing, to make sure that you are in the atmosphere where the enemy cannot touch you, touch the areas that God has already dealt with to give you victory. So today, I'm asking you that um, in whatever situation that you find yourself in, there are different levels in, in, in receiving your healing. Like that woman that had to be really, really, really humble. Like I said, Jesus Christ had to put himself in the situation of where a normal human being can look down on you sometimes when you really need to get something from them. As was for a child, it could be for a job for you. It could be you are scouting for a new job and everything. And they're telling you over and over again, bring this, bring that, bring that. And God has been telling you consistently, your victory is in that place. That place, that company with this person. And maybe the person has, don't have the attitude to encourage you, to convince you about what God has told you. Hello. <laughs> I, we are hearing you, mommy. So that is where our faith comes in. Yes. Let me tell you, there's nothing God tells us that is a lie. Mm. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. It didn't say we should live by our, our sight, mm. our eyes. Hallelujah. So for you to have healing and victory in some areas, if you are living by your sight and comparing it to what God told you, my darling, you have a long way to go. Mm. He didn't call us to live by sight. He didn't call us to live with our natural senses. He said, the just shall live by faith. Thank you, Father. He said, without faith, no man can please God. Is somebody still with me? Yes, we are here. So for your healing, because I don't like, oftentimes people just like, pronounce healing upon me. But yeah, if healing is pronounced, because it's, the word of God is a force, it will come. But how do you sustain it? All of these other areas have to be engaged also. Hallelujah, yes. All of these other areas have to be engaged. So we must put all of these things in perspective and God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So how many minutes do I have? So I will know if I still, um, I'm still in line with your timing. Uh, yes, ma'am. We'll be rounding up in the next 10 minutes. Okay, in the next 10 minutes, good. So um, I will also look at some other areas 
of um, life's problem and um, how I'm pronouncing words. I've, I've dealt with uh, family, I've dealt with children. So anyone that has any child that is giving trouble in any way, I'm praying right now that the power of the enemy that has come upon that child be lifted right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because the Bible says it's giving us power and authority to trample upon all the powers of the enemy. And it says, nothing shall by enemies or us. So today, I join my faith with any woman right here that's having issue with any child. The Bible says, he will fight against those that fight against us. He will contend against those that contend against us. And he will save our children. And I'm asking that anyone, under the sound of my voice, that has any child that the enemy is contending with, I ask that the power of God begin to contend with the forces that is contending against that child or children in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I ask Satan and every devil in hell, remove your hands in the lives of God's children right now. Now, in Jesus' name, I pray deliverance for any child that is in any some form of oppression, depression, suicidal thoughts, or issues in any family right now that is under the sound of my voice, I ask that the power of God descends and sets you free in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then, oftentimes, people might also have issues of life that will make you go to the tissue, that will make you cry out. In your workplace, in your workplace, you know, career, you know, everything about life, you know, a lot of people have had situations, either you have bosses that you, you are not able to please no matter what you do, or you have co-workers that are always contending with your positions, coming against you in your workplace, coming against you in your career choices, or you are trusting God for a new career, or you are trusting God for a new job. Those are issues that will take us to the tissues. So today, I'm praying for such people that in the name of Jesus, the power of God will step into your situation and give you peace in your workplace and in your career. In the name of Jesus, amen. It is that you are confused about your career. And you do not even know how to go about it. I'm asking that the wisdom of God that I've asked us to pray for will give you direction in that area of your life and you will take it through in Jesus' name. And Amen. sometimes also, um, we might have faced unfair treatment in life. Unfair treatment. That those are other issues that can bring us into easy, you know, situations that will make us go to the tissue and just um, and just cry out. People have treated you unfairly unjustly, it could be in relationship, it could be in marriage, it could be in just normal friendship, it could be in any area of life. I'm asking that God will step in and you will get the sort of treatment you deserve in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will step into your situation and you will get the sort of treatment that you deserve in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will get the sort of treatment you deserve in the name of Jesus. And sometimes also in life, you can, you can be going through a phase of, you know, emptiness and boredom. There are so many issues in life. You might just be bored. You might just be lonely. You're at an age where all your children have gone away and you're just bored. You're just lonely. You feel frustrated that at this season of my life, what can I do? How do I, how do I navigate this season? And it will bring tears to you. I'm praying for you today in the name of Jesus that the power of God will touch down and encourage you and bring people into your life to encourage you in this set time of your life and remove boredom and remove loneliness. Anything that will make you have the good companions around you in this set time. I'm asking God to lead the people after his heart to you in your situation in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if you are in the middle of financial Amen. crisis right now, 
Either you're indebted or you are confused about how to pay your bills. God is interested in that also. There's nothing God cannot do for us supernaturally. How many people believe that? He's the, he's the, he's the creator of heaven and earth. He said, uh, the head is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that were there. So there is nothing you want God to do for you that he does not own. He said, there's nothing that has been created that was not created for him and by him. God can go and touch somebody you have never known in your life, that you have never met, that you, are, you do not even know that the person is watching you. And God can minister to that person to send help to you, to deliver you from that crisis. So today, whatever financial crisis you are in, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, I'm asking God to move for you supernaturally because the head is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it. He said he has the art of kings in his hand and eternity whichever way he will it. So I'm asking God to touch any life. Send men like angels, angels like men, to come and help you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let you free from that national father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Raise people to meet you and for he said he will supply our needs according to his wishes in glory in Christ in Christ Jesus amen and if you are in a place in your life where you are confused about life in general you know, as, 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 as ministers, we hear all sorts. When people will tell you some issues they are going through in life, you will even be amazed at how, how do they survive? So you might be in a situation where life has brought you into a place of confusion. Even the Bible said, King David, one of the greatest, our greatest matriarch that ever lived, a just man made it perfect was in a situation in life, even as a king, that his subjects wanted to kill him and stone him because they were not happy again about his leadership. He had to start acting like a madman to be able to escape them. Things happen in life that bring people into a sort of mental situation. That is why mental ailments Mental problem is not something that should be crossed over or be laughed about. <clears throat> There's nobody that is not going to one mental issue or the other. Mental problem is not until you become naked and uh, start wearing rags and go on the streets. There's mental problem of the mind, confusion, all sorts of things. You will even not be able to know how to go about your life in the next direction or how to begin to move. A whole king got to, and a, choices, a, a choice king of God also. A man after God's heart. So you can be somebody after God's heart and you are faced with a lot of liability situation. And you are faced with confusion. But the same David said, King David said, I have been young, but I now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begged for bread. Oh, thank you, Father. I pray that God will not forsake you. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. wherever you are that you are confused in life, Amen. God will not forsake you. Amen. He says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begged for bread. You will never be forsaken. Thank and your children will not beg for bread in life in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. So if you have mental issue of any sort, for whatsoever reason, I'm asking that the spirit of God, I'm asking that the spirit of God, we begin to enter your heart, begin to 
help you begin, you know, our best friend is the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. No what situation we are going through in life. If we can be quiet enough and communicate with the Holy Spirit more, you will be amazed how it will be horrible to you like you are now, like you and I are speaking right now. He will tell you which direction to go. He will tell you what is happening the next second. He will tell you that person that is pretending to be your friend is not your friend, but don't hate the person. But this is how to deal with the person. He will tell you that issue that is bothering you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We are already on top of the matter. Pray like this and pray like that. That is why the spirit of the Lord has been given to us to help our mind because it lives in the inside of us. But we have to find time. Like I always tell people, you must find time at least one hour every day in the morning, one hour every day at night to be in the presence of the Lord. That is, I'm talking about the list of, if you, if you hear the sort of, Spiritual requirements God gives to some of us that are true apostles. I'm not talking about people that just carry apostleship by true. I'm talking about true apostles. If you know our rudiment in the presence of God, you will say, how can that be possible? And the Holy Spirit, you know, once you surrender your life to God completely and you allow the Holy Spirit to rule you, he gives you a routine. The Holy Ghost puts you in a routine the way you will, you know, Manage your life with time and in all areas. The Holy Ghost will just put you in a routine. He will tell you how to pray, what time to pray, how to, how to engage when you are reading scripture, how to pray with each scripture you are praying, how to pray some things even from your background that I have written you. So the best counselor and friend you can have in the midst of life's confusion is the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you release yourself totally to the spirit of God from today in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. So I am asking God to come into areas. You know, women will deal with a lot of issues. In fact, where do you want to start the issue of a woman's life? They are just, they are just too numerous that sometimes um, you will begin to wonder. Um, how do women survive from, from, from day to day? But I'm just uh, going to round this up with a scripture in the area of restoration. Because Amen. all said and done, what we want in every aspect of our lives is that everywhere that the enemy has come against us, that God should restore us. Hallelujah. Amen. That God should step in and, uh, and restore us. In those in those areas, so um, I'm going to take um, a scripture in the book of Psalm 80, verse three. Psalm 80, verse three says, "Restore, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved." Amen. Psalm 80, verse three. Restore, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. Mm -hmm. Father Lord, I'm asking and I'm praying in agreement with your word to your mm -hmm. people that everywhere anyone needs restoration, Father Lord, by your mercy, restore, oh God. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let your face shine upon your people again. Amen. Let your face shine and let us be saved. Amen. Let us be saved. Amen. Save anyone that needs salvation. Amen. Save anyone that needs you to rescue them from the situation of life. Amen. So God, save today, oh God, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 85 verse 4 says, Restore us again, O God of our Amen. salvation. And put away your indignation towards us. Because oftentimes, it is God's anger that leaves us open to the attack of the enemy. But thank God for that which Jesus has done. Thank God for the finished work of the cross. So right now, Father Lord, under the covering grace of the blood of Jesus, we are asking you, O oh God, anywhere anyone has offended you that needs your mercy, we are asking you, Father Lord, restore again. Restore us again, God yes, of our Lord. salvation. And put away your indignation 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the, name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So as I round up, I will round up with this scripture. In the book of Isaiah 47, verse 18, it says, I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. God has seen what is happening with you. God knows what is happening in everybody's life. God knows our ways. He said, I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will lead him. I'm asking that God begin to heal you right now. Amen. Wherever you need healing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever you need healing, I'm asking God to heal. In the name of Jesus. He said, and I will restore comfort to him. And his mourners. Everywhere you need to be comforted. Comfort of life. Comfort of the heart. Comfort of your total existence in any area you are mourning. I'm asking that God will restore comfort to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I ask every morning. Morning is not only when somebody dies and you are mourning. You can be mourning situation of your life. I say, why is my life like this? You can be mourning, so it could be anything. So anywhere you are mourning, today, that mourning has come to an end. Amen. Jesus, and I ask that the mercy of God touches down, restore you in all areas of life, Amen. and you begin to receive comfort, the comfort Amen. of the Holy Ghost, the comfort of prosperity, Amen. the comfort of good health, Amen. the comfort of total establishment in Amen. all areas of your life. The Amen. comfort of abundant life, the abundant life, because Christ came to give us life and to give it to us even more abundantly. That will be for you, that will be for me in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you, Amen. Thank we you give you praise and we honor you. Holy Thank Spirit, you. breathe on this word that has gone out yes, into Lord. the atmosphere concerning the lives of your people Thank in you. all areas and even more that I mentioned and we don't mention. And let, O oh Lord God, be a manifestation of the word that has been released today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Because wow. we God bless us all. Thank you so much, ma'am. We receive our healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is powerful. We have been so, so blessed. I'm Hallelujah. going to call uh, on Pastor Tracy to just bless the woman of God. And together, we just blessed all the, everyone, just that the Lord himself will refill all his vessels in the mighty name of Jesus. Many virtues have come out. People have been delivered. Knowledge have brought liberation. And we have received the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit to go into that deep area, that private leaking. So for the Lord to shut it out. We thank you. Father, for that which you have done. Mama, we thank God for your life. Thank God. Thank you for all that you Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. Pastor Tracy, please. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. 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 Thank you so much, Apostle Ma'am. Thank you so much. I celebrate your grace. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, Pastor Angie and the, uh, Pastor K. Osuya. And of course, all the ministers also that spoke yesterday. Thank you so, so, so much. It has been an amazing time. We are going to pray for our women of God who the Lord have used uh, to touch something in us. And they did not just touch something in us. They went to the foundation. They went to the pain that has taken roots deep down in our spirit. They started from there and they uprooted it. 
we are going to pray that the power of God will continue to rest upon them mightily in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And every word that they've spoken as prophet of the Most High, whether in the secular Amen. session or in the area of uh, the church uh, forum, that their word will not fall to the ground in the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And of course, a fresh oil upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just open up your mouth and begin to release God of power over this woman in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, precious Holy Spirit, we thank you, O oh God, for those women of God that you've used, O oh God, who soak us with your word. Our God and our Father, we we'll pray, O oh God, for your higher grace, O oh God. Yes, we decree, O oh God, that your grace, O oh God, is more to fly upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, every word of God they've released over us, we declare and decree. It is producing results in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Not on all of these words have spoken to us. We fall to the ground in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We rebuke the enemy that we want to steal. Yes, the effectiveness of this words from our spirit, these prayers from our spirit, we rebuke them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, oh God, we ask oh God that all those minister, you minister to their need in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have declared. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. Man. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, God bless you man. all. Thank you. Thank God bless you, all the women. So you. can I go? So can you guys excuse me? I, I have another uh, program very soon. Illustration, yeah. yeah. With you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you so much. Bless you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. God bless Amen. you, man. Amen. Thank you. God bless Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, man. Hallelujah. So, uh, thank you, everyone. I know we have we have gone beyond the time, but thank you so much for staying. We can't end this without reaching out to those who are still looking and still on the fence. I'm not sure yet that what are these people doing, but I love what they are doing. I love the way they are doing it, but you have not accepted Christ into your life. You have not made that decision yet, but you just love all that have been said. Let me tell you, the greatest source of joy is Christ Jesus. And when you accept Christ, you will, be, you will receive the Holy Spirit who will be your best friend, who will be like a navigator, who will be the voice behind your ear to be able to move around. The thing, the difference between being without Christ and being in Christ is not the challenges of life because we all are still in this world. We all still go through the same thing because we are still living in this earthly body. But the difference is the having the power of God in you. you. You heard that story. And when the woman touched the Lord, she received power. Hallelujah. So I want to invite you. I want to call you wherever you are, wherever you are looking, uh, joining us from. And those that will be hearing this again, those that will view this again, I want to invite you to the Lord. I want you to come and confess all you have heard. It is not a fairy tale. It is true. We have liberty in Christ. We have freedom in Christ. We have healing in Christ. So if you have made up your mind and know that what we are doing here, it interests you as we have come calling you to that new life in Christ, to that new, to that powerful life in Christ. Because the life we have is the Zoe life, the life giving power that is in Christ. So I invite you to confess with me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your full step daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and answering my prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have said this prayer, I want to congratulate you. You are connected to us on Facebook through Essence Oasis and the Zillion's Woman Ministries. Send us a text. 
if, if we have our WhatsApp uh, group, you can connect with us through the Facebook. You can connect to any a, a church that is close to you, Bible church. We are here to help you with your spiritual work. But to be able to, uh, to, to, uh, to be able to enjoy this fullness, to be able to, to apply this knowledge you have gained, you have to be in Christ. So my friends, our love for you is to see you in Christ, to live a triumphant life in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank you all so much for all that you all that you have given us. Our Bishop Hannah, thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Paul, thank you so much. Prophet K, thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And our wonderful uh, psychologist, Maran, we, we appreciate God for your life. We, we pray that the Holy Spirit will engulf you as you live our midst, and the Lord himself will do mighty things in your community through you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to appreciate uh, our pastor that just left. I want to appreciate every of the zealous women. They have been wonderful. We, before these days, we have been praying. We have been uh, waiting on God, and he has answered us. So thank you so much, everyone. This is just the beginning. I want to appreciate those that are, are here with us now. Uh, Joy Bailey, Pastor Miriam, thank you, man. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Francisca, God bless you, man. Thank you for being there. Uh, I want to appreciate Pastor Roy Oliver. Thank you. That's the husband of uh, Pastor Tracy. Mrs. Shahid from our branch in Pakistan. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, our wonderful uh, Minister Pamela, God bless you. We appreciate you for joining. God bless you, Mrs. Sendame. We appreciate you, Sister Beauty. God bless you, man. Uh, and Mommy Evelyn, God bless you. We appreciate you. Uh, Sister Faith, we appreciate you. God bless you. My wonderful admin, amen, we appreciate you, man. God bless you. Our woman of God, Evangelist Kate, God bless you, man. But, um, Pastor Nicole, God bless you. Mrs. Nelsie, Mercy Innocent, God bless you. Mrs. Annie Chaipa, we appreciate you, man. Thank you so, so much. Uh, if I have not mentioned your name, just know we love you. Uh, Pastor Della, we appreciate you, man. We we appreciate you. God bless you. God bless you all. Please, uh, we we have come to the end. But uh, before I hand over to uh, Pastor Tracy again, I just want us to know that, like yesterday, this is a, a, a the motive of this is for us to take charge of our life. We have heard today. We have received, and we are not going back to our vomit. And as we move on from here, we have received power to, to, to move into that darkness with the wholeness of who Christ is in us. So I want to congratulate you for that which you have received. Hold on to it. Don't allow the enemy to wreckage it again. Don't allow the enemy to come back and start telling you this or that. He is a liar. His lies are from the pit of hell. So you are delivered, you're healed already, and you're going to move on in that, growing in that. The Bible said we grow in the knowledge of Christ and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us go on with this and let us move with power. We are coming back and we'll be sending out information. We are having retreats for us to be able to move from glory to glory. The Bible said the light or the path of the righteous one continue to shine brighter and brighter. So uh, watch out for more uh, information, but remember every tissue in your issue have been healed in the mighty name of Jesus. You are more than conqueror. You are the one the Lord has chosen. And remember that best. Daughter, your faith has made you whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor Tracy, please. God bless you, my name. Glory. Hallelujah.
Glory, 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 glory. I feel like screaming. Wow. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. This is Amen. super huge. This is super huge. Amen. And of course, the Lord has decided to take issue in the tissue all around the globe. And we are ready to go with the Lord. We are ready to go with the Lord. And the first one that we are going to go with is the minister's retreat. So start packing your bag. Uh, start making your arrangements. Uh, start putting your money together because very soon we are going to take off and we are going to get together in a place where we can rest our head, where we can talk to ourselves, where we can see ourselves face to face because just online is no longer enough. I want to mingle with you. We want to Hallelujah. mingle. There needs to be a mingling. There is a friendship in Christ. Okay. And you are not just a friend. You are a sister that the Lord has just brought my way. And I am glad that the Lord has brought you my way. So get ready for that. Uh, please remember, we have the motherly uh, covering prayer platform where we'll pray for our kids every Monday. And the time is uh, eight o'clock uh, UK time. Uh, then uh, once in every two weeks, second Sunday and fourth Sunday of the month, we have the Zealous Women uh, Ministry uh, Fellowship. And by the special grace of God, we are having the Eagles Conference coming up in the month of August. Glory! Glory! The Eagles Conference is where we come together to celebrate the work that you have been doing in Christ Jesus. And this year, we have decided to celebrate it with back to school. So we are going to be reaching out with sponsorship to 17 children in Africa by sponsoring their uh, school fees, their books, and the rest of it. So uh, stay at a lot. Then... On the Zealous Woman platform, and of course, with the collaboration of the Essence Oasis, there's something that we always do. Every woman the Lord brings our way, what the Lord uses us to do is to take them from an ordinary Gideon to become a warrior Gideon. Oh, is to yeah. take them from that David that was a bush boy to become David the giant killer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next Sunday is our, our Zealous Woman Fellowship. And we want to invite all of you because one of ours will be launching our first single on the platform, Evangelist Kate Ayeni. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know that the song that the Lord has given to her is going to bless life all around the world. We are saying women are right. Women are right. These women need to start doing something. And when they start, we need to carry them. We need to encourage them. We need to pray for them. We need to give them all the necessary uh, support, psychologically, emotionally, physically, even financially, if they need be. Thank you so much, everyone. We love you. And we're looking forward to seeing you on the platform on Sunday. And to all the women in on this platform that have their own ministry, we are here to support you. Uh, that we, 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 there is no competition between us as women, especially Christian women. If uh, the godly women can come together to achieve uh, bigger things, we can do so much more. So we are here with you. Anywhere you want to, whatever you want to do, whatever, anything you want to achieve, Team. we are in it with you we are in it with you and don't forget our bishop is giving out a book an ebook send in your your email and we will make the book the ebook available for you and oh, do yeah. not forget that we have uh this book leveraging your uniqueness by minister Deswa. try and get your copies on amazon Try and get your copy. And of course, there are a lot of women on this platform who have written books. Get your book. Very soon, we are going to start book studying. And it's going to be amazing. The Eagles magazine is already on the move. Thank you so much, everyone, once again. We love you. Together, we'll say we can. Uh, Together, we can. We love you. So now we cannot share the grace in fellowship because we are done. So we want to Hallelujah. say once again, 
Thank you to all the pastors. Thank you to all the sisters. Thank you to our beloved uh, Myron. Uh, sorry, at the time I had to be going out and on. You know, they are white people. They have their way of uh, uh, doing their food things. So I have to go attend to them as well. But she's so excited. She's happy. She, in short, she is uh, flag blasted. She is uh, blown away. And I know she is already packing her bag to the conference. No amen, amen, <laughs> amen. Oh, thank you, dear Lord Please Jesus. just recognize Pastor Mara with us. She just, oh, uh, hello, Pastor um, Mara. Hello, man of God. God bless Glory. you all. Beautiful face, woman of God. <laughs> <laughs> she might not be in the place. <laughs> oh, my God. Pastor Mara, I to see you. Good to see you too. Good wow. to hear you. I'm seeing you. You're not seeing me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we love you dearly. And please remind us, we are in it together. You remember I called you, I said, okay, when is your mom, mommy's burial? And you, you mentioned it. I said, okay, we have time to prepare. We are coming along with you. We are not leaving you to eat all by yourself. We are coming along. We are all in all this together. We are women and we we are there to, to be a support system for one another. So Pastor Mara's uh, uh, lost the mom. And if you've not called her to have a condolence talk with her, go ahead and do so. And don't only do a condolence talk because I'm going to make sure I go around everybody. We are going to support her because when my mother died, thanks to all those women, I went to Africa. In short, my pocket was full. My pocket was full. When I started doing things in Africa, people thought I came from where they don't know. But it was thanks to all the women. And we are ready to stand the same with you. Thank you so much, Pastor Mara, for coming. We love you dearly. We love you. Oh, thank right. you, thank you so much. Sorry about the, no, the, the noise. No I've got no ten, I've got ten boys. Sorry about. We are all mothers. We are all mothers. We are all mothers. We are all mothers. And we are, well, please, I want to just say one little thing. Uh, that reminds me. If you come on this platform and we are insisting, mute your mic, mute your mic. Don't feel embarrassed, okay? Uh, if there is noise, we cannot just keep quiet. But we recognize that we are all mothers. Okay, so feel free, free, don't uh, let it bug you. When we say mute your mic, it's just to draw your consciousness for your mic to be muted so that the platform there can be calmness. But we are all mothers and the, uh, you know what I mean? So <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you, Max. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. So we thank God for what he has done in our midst. I know we are all going away from here, filled up. And Amen. please let us remain in the world. Let us Amen. remain in the world. Hallelujah. So in that uh, way we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ the, the love, love of God, yeah. and, and the, the sweet fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, spirit is rest and abide with, with us now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Don't hold Sorry. back your testimony. Don't Hallelujah. hold back your testimony, please. Hallelujah. Don't hold back your testimony before you share the uh, Don't hold back your testimony. Make sure you send them in. Let's bombard the platform with our testimony. Go on, woman of God. Sorry about that. Amen. Amen. I will say surely, surely the goodness and the blessings follow us all the days of our lives. All the days of our lives. We are fed in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If this is your first time with us and you really want to be part of us, please send in your contact. I will reach out to you and we'll add you to our platform. And uh, yes, we want to do life with you. God bless you, Rich. Bless you. Amen. We love you. Love you. Love and you don't forget, we love you too. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 God bless Bye. you. God bless Bye. you. God bless you. God bless you, sweetie. <laughs> Wow, glory! Glory! Like on Facebook, finally in totality, glory! <laughs> glory, my Bishop! <laughs> glory to God, Hallelujah! Wow, 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 wow! All the computer that was blowing up, oh, glory! <laughs>
The Lord is mighty. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Sister Chai, all the way from Pakistan. God oh, bless you. Oh, we love you. Sister Chai, we love you. you. We love you. We love you. Love God you too. Good evening to all of you. I Thank receive you. in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Amen. I'm blessed to powerful message. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Glory. I love you, all of you. And we love you we too. Love you too. We love you. <laughs> we love you we love you we love you mm, we love you <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you all of you amen thanks you. your precious time amen. 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 amen amen wow all right everyone um, pastor Paul, go and have some rest we'll reach to you uh not today but we'll reach to you uh